In Norman, Oklahoma, we're ready for the kickoff. The temperature 68, the wind out of the east at 15 miles per hour. Bill Land and Robbie Robertson with you at Owen Field, and Oklahoma State will receive in the Bedlam battle to start this football game, Robbie, and let's hope we have the kind of excitement we saw a year ago oh, in which boy. Oklahoma State was nipped in the bud in the final moments, 31-28 in Stillwater. Well, you can bet it'll be loud in here today, Billy Boy, because uh, 76,000 folks and uh, uh, the Sooners haven't been home in almost a month, so you know they're all fired up and ready to go, so uh, see what happens today with Oklahoma State as we get ready for the opening kickoff. All right, Joe Bowden is ready to, well, I beg your pardon, the kickoff comes to Oklahoma State and take it at the 10. 20, 25, and across the 30, Gerard Green out of Port Arthur, Texas. And Oklahoma State, good field position. Franks and Belcher making the tackle for Oklahoma, and it'll be first and 10, Oklahoma State, the ball on the 31 of the Cowboys. Good start for Oklahoma State. I thought perhaps if Green had, uh, had moved out to the uh, boundary, might have had a little more running room. Mike Gundy at quarterback, Cecil Wilson, the fullback, Vernon Brown starts in place of the injured Gerald Hudson. And on first down, up the middle, the Cowboys go with Brown. Brown had a big week last Saturday against Wyoming and comes in with 169 yards rushing on the season, averaging better than four and a half per carry. Vernon out of Dell City, Oklahoma, picks up five at second and five after the tackle by Terry Ray. Seems to get better with the more carries that he has during the course of the ball game. Oklahoma, with one of the best defenses in the country, Pat Jones thinks it is the best offensive group. What a hole to Brown, and he slashes his way across the 45 to the 47-yard line as Belcher and Ray make the tackle, but wow! It was about five feet of running room width-wise there, Robbie. Yeah, good job by Joel Fry, Brent Davis on the left side of that Offensive line, big hole. You could have run through that one, Bill. Don't get carried away. <laughs> We're in the first quarter yet. <laughs> Opening drive, Oklahoma State, third place in scrimmage coming up. First and 10 from the 47 of OSU. Brown again. Trying to get outside and block down. Good pursuit by Frank Blevins, the leading tackler on the Oklahoma defense. He's a junior out of Colleen, Texas, 6'4", 224. He has stopped a yard shy of midfield. It'll be second and eight. Pat Jones in his sixth year at Oklahoma State. Looks on from the sidelines. Beautiful day here in Norman for football. The Cowboys haven't beaten Oklahoma since 1976. Here's the Sooner defense, Wayne Dixon at one side. Uh, there are your linebackers, Chris Wilson and Frank Blevins. A good pair, Thompson, Belser, Ray, and McMitchell in the secondary. Gundy to throw and it is incomplete over the outstretched hands of Mayfield, and he was hammered by Terry Ray. Terry Ray, an emotional player, as Mike Gundy throws his first pass of the day, three runs and a pass. Gundy closing in on the Big 8 Conference passing record, trying to establish that running game, and then hope that the uh, passing attack will be able to contribute. Third and eight for Oklahoma State. At the 49, we have 13-15 to go in the quarter. Kirksey, Green, and Mayfield, the receivers, as Gundy to air it out. In trouble, by some time, no one open. It's complete to Mayfield at the 44-yard line of Oklahoma, very close to a first down. As Curtis Mayfield came back to the football, he was tackled by McMitchell. Well, I'll tell you what. This Oklahoma State offensive line's really taking some heat this year because of their youth. But I'm telling you what, uh, thank goodness there isn't a, a time clock in uh, college football because uh, Gundy had all day to throw back there. It is fourth and a yard, and the Cowboys will go for it at the Sooner 44. And listen to a roar here in Norman. Wilson and Brown behind Gundy. And Brown has got uh, the Wilson has got the first down. Cecil Wilson, tackled by Frank Levins. And you may have read, if you're in the Oklahoma area watching this telecast, some of the publicity about Cecil Wilson. And he says, golly, I got to carry the football a bunch last week. That doesn't happen at OSU. The tailback's usually the star, but 
Wilson proved worthy of the cause. He averages better than four yards per carry, and he'd like to carry it a bunch more this Saturday. Yeah, Cecil Wilson had his best day of his career uh, last week as he rushed for 70 yards. So the Cowboys in their opening possession with 12-17 to go in the quarter, have it first and 10 at the Oklahoma 39-yard line. This is Brown, and he is sworn by the shooter to think. Scott Evans, 6'3", 260, a junior from Edmond, and there's Tracy Gordon, a junior from Pocolo, Oklahoma. Well, the Sooners will put the heat on the Cowboys in throwing situations. They have 18 sacks this year. This is a great bunch defensively. Take a look at uh, no place to run for Brown, Tracy Gordon, and Scott Evans in there on the tackle now. Second down situation for Oklahoma State. Second and 11. And Gundy. Looking for time. And gets rid of the football. Green was the nearest receiver as Ray was covering on the play. Mike Gundy last year, one of many stars in the thriller up in Stillwater. Passed for 228 yards. Dykes and Sanders had big days. Gaddis went nuts for the Sooners. Yeah, quite a ball game. One of the better in the series. And even though Oklahoma has dominated the series, they've won 12 in a row. Uh, over the past uh, five or six years, Oklahoma State, this has been uh, a very close ball game over the past few years. Sooners lead the series 66-11-6. and six. It's third and 11 now. And Gundy scrambling again. Gets a block. Going deep. Incomplete and nearly intercepted in the end zone by Greg Jacquese. A flag has been thrown. Mark Walker was the intended receiver. I don't know what the call will be there, uh, Bill. It might be a holding call downfield. Gundy drops the ball but picks it up. And now, once again, he, he's got a scramble here, but he gets a great block right there. That gives him time, but probably an ill-advised throw here. Greg DeQuazy almost intercepts that ball, but it uh, falls incomplete. We'll see what the uh, what the call is here now. Didn't catch the Sooner defender that was pressuring Gundy, but it looked like Mike just didn't get quite enough time to get all the oomph into it that he needed. Here are the officials of today's ball game. A big penalty. It is against Oklahoma and will move the football to the 25-yard line of the Sooners. So I think we've got a, a holding call here, uh, Bill, as the play unfolded downfield. The, the flag was thrown at about the 10-yard line, so I think we've got a holding call. Well, and now they march it back the other way. Oh, they, they paced off just a little too much, that's all. <laughs> it's a five-yard penalty. 11.22 to go in the quarter, and... It'll be a repeat third down and six. The ball will be on the 35-yard line of Oklahoma. Three receivers out for Gundy now. Mayfield to the bottom of your screen. To Brown, got the first down to the 25 and down inside the 25-yard line. Vernon Brown, another big run to Crazy, makes the tackle for Oklahoma. Good call, as you see, Vernon Brown rushing for 106 yards last week. Good call, a draw play. You know Oklahoma's thinking pass. Joel Fry with a good block on the left side, and Vernon Brown just running for daylight. Third first down for Oklahoma State. They've got the ball inside the Sooner 25. Now understand, Oklahoma has only given up two touchdowns defensively and only 205 yards per game this year they are fourth in the nation in total defense on first and ten this is brown stutter stepping to the 21 brought down by mcmitchell and terry ray out of the sooner secondary 10 47 to go first period no score cowboys and sooners bedlam football here in norman oklahoma brown's last carry Six foot, 215 pound junior getting the starting nod today in place of Gerald Hudson out with a bruised knee. Second and seven at the 21. Brown. Things shut down 
couldn't find a hole, making the tackle for Oklahoma. Looked like Gordon in on the play. Also, Chris Wilson. You know, you linebackers always big in tackles. There's Wilson, a sophomore from Richardson, Texas. 6'3", 226. And Gary Gibbs, the first-year coach at Oklahoma. And he's got the Sooners rolling at 3-1. Their lone loss, a 6-3 defeat at Arizona. The Cowboys are 1-3. This is the Big 8 opener for Oklahoma State. The Sooners beat Kansas last week in their lid lifter. Third and five for the Cowboys. Brown, nope. Vernon Brown stopped at the 17 by Gordon and Stacy Dillard, a sophomore from Clarksville, Texas, number 77. Take another look at it. Vernon Brown trying to go off the right side here. Just a, a little bit better angle for Kerry Blanchard. Uh, Brown ends up a little bit short of the first down, three yards short. So Blanchard comes on to try a 36-yard field goal. Blanchard, 8 of 12 in the field goal category. This one is no good. No good. He fails on a 34-yard attempt. And the Sooner fans love it. They hold. We'll take a break with our score 0-0, 901 to go in the first quarter. NFL history can now be yours in an all-new video cassette collection. Presenting the official NFL Films video collection from NFL Films, Fox Hills, and Time Life. Now you can replay the greatest game, the mammoth feats of the legendary linemen, the suspense of the Super Bowls, and more. Kick off your collection with the toughest, most explosive players in the game. They're all part of your first video cassette, Crunch Course. Just $14.99 plus shipping and handling. The official NFL Films Video Collection. Here's how to order. Call now 1-800-262-0900 to get your first video cassette, Crunch Course, at the low introductory price of just $14.99. Or send 1822 to NFL Video Collection, P.O. Box 1880, Department 26, Alexandria, Virginia. Oklahoma will get its first crack offensively. Bill Land and Robbie Robertson with you in Norman. No score. Sooner football for the first time this afternoon. And 9-0-1 to go here in the first period. Impressive drive by Oklahoma State. Robbie against a much heralded OU defense. Right. They held the ball for almost six minutes, Bill. Too bad they couldn't get any points out of it. You see Cooper spreading wide offensively to the split position. Tim Collins, the freshman quarterback, is wrapped up for no gain. George Bright makes the tackle. OSU fans, you're saying George who? George Bright, a true freshman, getting his first action of the year in a starting role today. He's 6'3", 205 out of Houston. Look for number two. And there you see Tink Collins, and there's George Bright with good speed. That's why he's in the lineup today, to try and handle some of the sooner speed. But George Bright steps right up, makes his first tackle. No gain. Tink Collins calling the shots. Cooper comes to the left side now as the tight end on a second down and 10. The Sooners throw to Gaddis out of the backfield to the 25, 30, 35, 40. One more man, and Gaddis is brought down at the Oklahoma State 37-yard line by Rod Smith. Well, the Sooners completed, Collins completed five passes last week for over 80 yards. He threw on first play against Kansas. This time he goes on the second. Yeah, it's a 47-yard pickup here. Gaddis is a good receiver. He obviously has good moves. And uh, there you see him in the open field. Mike Gaddis, uh, the leading rusher for Oklahoma, but also an outstanding passer. And you see Rod Smith has to come over and knock him down. Pick up a 42, I believe. Gaddis' first reception, but he is that versatile. They can utilize him in a number of ways. On first down, Leon Perry, the fullback, gets the call. And Devin Jones and George Bright make the tackle. The Sooners now, after the big play, Trying to knock on the door. Second down and six for Oklahoma. And the ball marked on the 33-yard line of the Cowboys. Take another look at the swing pass out to Gaddis. He's got good speed and he's strong. And once he gets into the secondary, he's a handful. 
Oklahoma coming up here now with a second down play. Gaddis has rushed for 425 yards through the first four games at 6.3 per carry. Fullback, Perry to the 30. Give him three. And Brandon Colbert, junior out of El Reno, Oklahoma, makes the tackle. Oklahoma State defense giving up uh, about 189 yards a, a game. Here's the Sooner offense. Collins at quarterback, Perry and Gaddis long here up front. Taron Manning, Sawatsky Wise, Madi Skiersbilt, and Adrian Cooper. Third down and three. Pitch out, Gaddis. And he is stopped, but not until he gets the first down at the 21 and a half yard line. Mike Gaddis out of Midwest City, Oklahoma, last year, 213 yards in this Bedlam battle, scored two touchdowns and had big runs of 44 and 50. Stacy Satterwhite comes over to make the tackle. Stacy Satterwhite had a good ball game last week. You see Mark Van Kiersbilt being helped off the field for Oklahoma State. Here's the Cowboy defense, David Brooks, Brandon Colbert, Sean Mackey, and Stacy Satterwhite up front. George Bright, Sim Drain the third, and Devin Jones are the linebackers and Clark Fleshman, Smith and Jewell in the secondary. First and 10, Long and Cooper shift wide to the right. Bross is the receiver on the left for the Sooners. Got it. Wrapped up inside the 20, stopped at the 17 yard line. Sim Drain the third and Mike Clark make the tackle for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. When you saw Van Kiersbilt hustle off the field with an injury, the Sooners are banged up in that offensive line as Medice and Manning are both nursing injuries that were aggravated last week against Kansas. Yeah, both ball clubs are hurting uh, coming into this game, uh, Bill. Oklahoma State closed rather rapidly in that hole as you take a look at Gary Gibbs on the OU sideline. Second and five for the Sooners. This is Gaddis. Cowboys trying to strip the football, but he makes it to the 13-yard line. Sim Drain on the stop. Gaddis, 20th in the nation in rushing. Well, he's the next Heisman hopeful for Oklahoma. He's got great speed, and he's a power runner when he gets inside, so he has all the tools. Oklahoma State, again, closing pretty quickly, although Oklahoma was able to pick up the, uh, or just short of the first down. Now, big play here. Yeah, third and one for the Sooners. The football at the 13. Collins, wraps hard. But look like he got the first down. Bright and Green making the tackle. Bright getting his first action for the Cowboys has great speed, and they feel they'll need that here against Oklahoma. And Reuben Oliver will be most likely moved back to the nose guard position. Well, I don't think, uh, you know, Oklahoma doesn't really do anything too fancy to you. You know what's coming. It's just a matter of whether you can get there to stop it or not. So uh, Oklahoma State head coach Pat Jones, as they bring out the sticks to measure for this first down, Oklahoma State head coach Pat Jones wants to get a little more speed in that lineup. It is a first down for the Sooners. They're third of the ball game. They're two for two in third down conversions now. So the Sooners will have it first down and 10 at the, what do they call that, the 11? Call it the 11. I guess so. Oklahoma. Doing it on the ground, but the big play was the swing pass to Gaddis to set them up in this situation. The Sooners are second in the nation in rushing offense at 369 yards a game on the ground. Gaddis. Inside the 10 to the seven and a half and Brandon Colbert and Joe King. There's another new name. You saw number five on your screen. Joe is a sophomore from Dallas, Texas and had a broken ankle in preseason drills. But back playing today. Cowboys jammed it up, but Gaddis was able to spin away and pick up a couple of three yards. Yeah, that's good for Oklahoma State to see Joe King back in the lineup. He worked out all week, didn't seem to have a problem with the ankle. No score, Sooners trying to get the first one on the board. Gaddis inside the five and pushing forward. On a second and six call, Drain and Mackey there. Sooners could get a first down if they got inside the one. 4.04 to go in the period. Take another look at Gaddis. You see, I think it was Fleshman came up, missed the tackle, and then a whole bunch of white shirts there to 
to bring Gattis down. The Roughnecks on the OU sideline. Third down and two at the Cowboy three. Cooney taking over after a missed 34-yard field goal. The shot by Oklahoma State on the Cowboys' first possession. And Gattis tumbles inside the one. He's got the first down just short of the touchdown. So now it'll be first and goal. Rob Smith was there to keep him out of the end zone. Take another look at it. Gattis up and over. And you can see he is just short of the goal line. Rod Smith is there. But Oklahoma knocking on the door. Oklahoma State had a long drive, came away with nothing. Oklahoma, has, uh, or Oklahoma State had a long drive, and now Oklahoma's had a long drive and knocking on the door. And here the Sooners are at first and goal. Gaddis, and he breaks the plane. No signal. I don't believe so. Well, the Cowboy front stops him on first down. Sim Drain, the third. Officials timeout. Want to get that ball spotted correctly. You can see that no way right there. Didn't break the plane of the goal line, so they'll do it again. Second and inches. Green came in, 38 tackles. Is playing and getting the most out of his ability, according to the OSU coaches. A timeout is called with 2.46 to go in the first quarter. Cowboys and Sooners deadlocked at zero. We'll talk it over here. And in fact, the whole OSU defense is going to come over and visit. We'll be back in a moment. and one with 2.45 to go in the first period in Oklahoma. Second and goal, I should say, inside the one of the Cowboys. Tink Collins with the full house backfield behind it. Gaddis on the dive. No indication yet, just like on the first down call, a very similar play and similar result. Drain right. and Bright were there, Robbie. Yeah, it looks like we're going to run this play until we dive into the end zone, but Oklahoma State is right there. I'm telling you what, it's plays like this, Bill, that just fires up that Oklahoma State defense. And after having a long drive, and even though they didn't come away with any points, they feel like they can move the football. And they're standing right up here down there at the goal line. Gaddis, who's already scored six touchdowns this season, had a trouble earning number seven. Leon Perry, the fullback, both through, and the Sooners are on the board first with the opening touchdown. Leon Perry, a senior from Orlando, Florida, 6'1", 230 pounds on a simple dive. And it's Oklahoma 6. Cowboys up. Now you can't hope to keep them out all day. This is uh, a team that is second in the nation and rushing at 370 yards a game as R.D. Lasher comes on to try the extra point. Lasher, a junior from Plano, Texas. He's 20 of 20 in PATs this season. And he remains perfect. Sooners 7, Cowboys 0, back with a kickoff in a moment. Golf is more than just a game for your Southern Texas golf professional. It's his business, and it takes hard work for any business to be a success. Your Southern Texas professional works with the course staff to plan company golf outings. He'll help you develop your game through lessons given with a personal touch. Oklahoma's Brad Riddell will kick off for the Sooners with the hometown guys leading at 7 0. The big play in that drive for the Sooners. Gaddis 42 yard pass reception from Tink Collins, and the Sooners lead at 7 0 with 2.13 to go in the first period. 6.48 off the clock, so we've had two long drives here in the first quarter. Kickoff comes for Oklahoma State. Kirksey inside the 15. And great speed on the part of the Sooners on the recover on the coverage team and making the play for Oklahoma, Donnie Smitherman. No one touched him, and he brought down Kirksey. You know, Bill, another thing for that Oklahoma drive that take another look at the touchdown, and this is a third down play. Um, Oklahoma was successful four of four times in third down situations. So that's, that's always an indicator, folks. Uh, 
as to how your offense is doing to be able to convert those key third down situations. They're now 26 of 54 this season in third down conversion. First and 10 for Oklahoma State on the 22. And Vernon Brown out across the 25 to looks like the 28 yard line. Nice pickup for Brown as Terry Ray makes the tackle. I believe it was Cecil Wilson coming out of that backfield too, Bill. Threw a nice block for him on the corner. And able to turn it upfield a little bit. Pick up of six. Wilson has drawn the praise of Pat Jones for his ability to come out and give his best every day, practice or game, and get the most out of what he's got. And performing very well. Second and four. And out on the flat, it is complete to Mayfield, and he gets the first down. Out of bounds, that's the 39-yard line. Curtis Mayfield, who came in with 11 receptions for 204 yards and a touchdown. Number three in the league in receiving. Just a quick little flip out here to Mayfield, and he's working against Kenny McMitchell, and run him out of bounds. And pick up of 11. It's another first down, though, as you take a look at Pat Jones. And... Got a player hurt on the Cowboys sideline, but it's a Sooner. Yeah, that's uh, Kenny McMitchell, and he was banged up uh, coming into the week. Uh, he had a rough game against Kansas. He was one of the many walking wounded for Oklahoma. And uh, a little tender. He had a slight really shoulder separation from the Kansas game. I didn't really see any contact there on the sideline, Bill, that would have indicated that uh, he took a shot on the shoulder, so uh, he just kind of pushed him out of bounds, uh, Curtis Mayfield. So might be something else. Yeah. Don't know. Well, they're packed in here this afternoon for Bedlam football. 129 uh, left to go here in the quarter. Kenny McMitchell a little slow in getting off the field. I think he probably still wants to play, but uh, take a little precaution here. And replacing him will be Melvin Carter out of Oklahoma City Marshall. Cowboys second possession as the first quarter winds down 129 to go next week game two in the big eight for Oklahoma State against the Kansas State Wildcats and check your local listings for the time that'll air in your area for those of you in Oklahoma of course it's 1030 every Saturday night that'll be a three o'clock start in Stillwater it's homecoming we'll try and come out to the old ball yard Lewis Field there Stillwater Green Brown and Mayfield be the receivers and now they're shuttling again first down and 10 for the Cowboys at the 39 of Oklahoma State first drive was thwarted on a missed field goal attempt the pass behind Mayfield Blanks was covered yeah that pass was uh, not catchable as the ball was uh, again a quick look in trying to uh, throw the ball to Mayfield inside and Gundy just missed him went behind him I think they're talking about it a little bit maybe they got a little confused as to how the route was supposed to be run but it's second down now second and ten from the Oklahoma State 39 Gundy has passed for 536 yards coming in with four intercepted and three touchdowns Brown squirms out to the 45 yard line Vernon Brown stopped by Tom Backus 6'5", 264 junior from El Paso, Texas, and Frank's also there. Take another look at Vernon Brown. Happy feet, always uh, looking for some place to run, a little daylight. Bacchus and Charles Franks are there to wrap him up after a pickup of six. So now a key third down situation here for Oklahoma State. They are one of three in third down conversions today. Third and five of the 45 of Oklahoma State, trailing seven nothing, first quarter about to come to a close. 51 seconds remain. Gundy spins on the option, and he's got the first down, and he's in Oklahoma territory, and a late flag is thrown. Would guess it would have to be a face mask violation. Frank Blevins made the tackle. So the Cowboys will pick up a few more. Here's the Oklahoma State option. Gundy comes down the line, makes the read on the defensive end, Wayne Dixon, tucks it under, and gets across midfield into Oklahoma territory. First down. And a little bit more after the uh, penalty. So Oklahoma State keeps the ball after the face mask penalty. Keeps the drive alive. Now the ball is sitting at the Oklahoma 44-yard line. Cowboys are fifth in the league in total offense at 349 yards per game. And 
That thing's cranked up pretty good last week against Wyoming and earning their first victory of the year, and they've moved the ball well, both drives here this afternoon. First and 10 at the 44 of the Sooners. Brown in trouble. Nice job. James Good slowed him down. Backus then came in to finish him off. So it'll be second down and 10, maybe a little bit more. 10 and a half. Take another look at it. Backus rolls off the block and laterally pursues uh, Brown. It'll be a second down play as the clock winds down to zero. That's the end of the first quarter here in Norman. Oklahoma with a 7-0 lead over the Cowboys of Oklahoma State. Back for the second quarter in a moment. The Great Games. The Games to Remember. 1957. Notre Dame's Fighting Irish snap Oklahoma's 47-game winning streak. And the Sporting News was there. 1987. Penn State caps a perfect season with... Leon Perry's one-yard touchdown run has given Oklahoma the 7-0 first quarter lead. Bill Land and Robbie Robertson with you as we get ready to go to quarter number two here in Norman. And... The score 7-0 Oklahoma, but it has been an even match as far as the tug of war on the football field. Yeah, both clubs had long drives. Uh, Oklahoma State started the ball game on offense, uh, held the ball for almost six minutes, unable to convert a 34-yard field goal. Then Oklahoma went 80 yards, held the ball for almost seven minutes, and uh, was able to get the touchdown dive by Leon Perry, and now Oklahoma State with the ball again that started at their own 22 they moved it into oklahoma territory so just moving right along here it'll be a second down and 10 situation for oklahoma state it's been a while since i've seen a game in which one team only got the football once in the entire first quarter and that's what oklahoma has and the cowboys with just their second possession here and they're moving it it's second down and 10 right now the ball of the 44 of oklahoma mike gundy senior quarterback wants to throw Incomplete, intended for Mayfield. Junior from Dallas, Texas, Bruce High School. Franks was covering near the sideline. Dante Williams was putting the heat on Mike Gundy. We got three of the best defensive backs in the Big Eight Conference as far as interceptions are concerned playing in this ball game today. Jason Jewell of Oklahoma State uh, leads the Big Eight in interceptions. Uh, Charles Franks of Oklahoma is second, and Mike Clark of Oklahoma State is third. So pretty good secondary people out there today. Third down and 10 for Gundy and company. Brown on the draw. Got loose from a couple, and then a host of tacklers came in to say, whoa, as Good and Ray were there. Great effort by Brown. There was simply nowhere to go, but he managed to fight off the first wave, but not the second. Well, you thought he was going to get away here for a minute. He's he's looking for some place to run, and he fights off those tackles, the one by Bacchus right there. But then other red shirts come up, and it's a punting situation for Kerry Blanchard. And Blanchard fourth in the league in punting at 39 per kick. And a timeout is called. With 14.25 to go, we'll take a break. Oklahoma leads 7-0. It's I'm nervous, it's I'm shy, it's I'm happy, it's good. On fourth and nine, Blanchard to punt from the Oklahoma 44. Blanchard on his own 44. Booms it, Taylor is deep, will let it go, and it goes into the end zone. Sooners will get it on the touchback. First and 10 on their own 20 for just their second possession of the football game. They scored on their first. It's seven up in Oklahoma, 14-19 to go in the half. Now, this is uh, part of the game plan, Bill. Uh, this Oklahoma offense, pretty potent, second in the nation in rushing. They don't throw the ball very much. But uh, when they have the ball, Oklahoma State needs for Oklahoma to have a long way to go and 80 yards. Uh, that, that's part of the game plan. In the eye, Collins has Perry at fullback, Gaddis at the tailback. Leon Perry, who scored the touchdown, off tackle, out to the 25-yard line. It'll be second and five after the five-yard pickup, and Devin Jones making the stop. Leon Perry, second-leading rusher on the OU ball club. 
ninth of the Big 8 Conference, averaging at about 68 yards a game. Durable player, injured some last year, healthy this year. Scored seven touchdowns, ran for 546 yards last year. Had a good Citrus Bowl. This is Gaddis across to the 27-yard line. Bobby Rayner making the tackle. A pickup of, well, give him two, make it third and three. 13-35, remaining second quarter. Sooners seven, Cowboys zero. Pat Jones trying to get this bunch together. Been tough enough for the Cowboys without having to open up the big eight slate against Oklahoma. Third and three for the Sooners. Collins to Gaddis. And across the 35, first down Oklahoma at the 37 of the Sooners. Rod Smith and Mike Clark there for Oklahoma State. Quick 10 yards. Mike Gaddis, fourth leading rusher in the uh, Big 8 Conference. 20th in the nation, averaging 106 yards a game. Had a big game last week. There you see him busting up, and uh, he can deliver a blow. 10-yard pickup. OU five for five in third down situation. There's Gaddis with it. First and 10 Sooners at the 37. Shuttling receivers. Cooper goes to the top of your screen. Long and Frost come to the bottom. Collins, and it hit the offensive lineman in the back. That was Sawatsky who was trying to lead interference. But Colbert and Rayner are the guys that caused that poor play. Tink Collins, the freshman from Ponca City, the quarterback that was harassed with flags also. Well, we'll see what happens here. Uh, the screen play sets up to the left side. And you can see Gaddis, the intended receiver. But Mike Sawatsky got in the way. Officials still discussing it down there on the field. Looks like Sawatsky just too close to Mike where there right. wasn't enough room for the ball to get by him well, or over him. Gaddis was out in front of him. We got an ine ineligible. Ineligible man downfield. Gaddis was out in front of Sawatsky. It looked to me like Bill. So, uh, yeah, good, good idea, but it uh, didn't work out so well. So, it'll make it second down and 15, and the ball will be moved to the 32-yard line. Gary Gibbs is getting an explanation from the official as the Cowboy band says, yeah, good call, we like it. <laughs> he does it. Yeah, he's done an excellent job in taking over for Barry Switzer and restructuring things here. Second and 15 at the 32. Oklahoma with a 7-0 lead, second quarter. Perry. He stopped at the 33-yard line. Bobby Rayner makes the tackle. Over the years that Oklahoma State has played so close to Oklahoma, Robbie, they have really just thrown everything in the kitchen sink at Oklahoma as far as gambling and blitzing and doing one. Interesting to see what they come up with here on a third and 14 on the young quarterback Collins. Right. Difficult for the, uh, that's the only problem with the wishbone offense is a uh, long yardage situation. So we'll see what they do here. Third down. Tink Collins. Looking to throw. Going deep for long. Incomplete. A collision at the 30. Rod Smith and Joe King were on headlong. A sophomore from Waco, Texas. Well, Oklahoma State had that pretty well covered. See Rod Smith and Jay Fleshman going back to the Oklahoma State huddle as uh, Oklahoma now in a punting situation. First time they've been unsuccessful on third down today. Brad Riddell will kick. He averages 40 yards of boot along a 53 against Kansas last week. And the lone receiver, Mike Clark, for Oklahoma State. On fourth and 14, Riddell sends at his own 19, nearly blocked, and they've gotten a piece of it. Nice roll for Oklahoma. Here's Clark. Got by that front wall. 35, 40. He could go. The 40. The 30. He got one more block. He'll score. Oh, mama. Touchdown, Cowboys. About an 80-yard return, Billy Boy. Interesting. And uh, Oklahoma State sideline just going crazy. An 80-yard return for Mike Clark. 
the coverage just overran the play. It looked like a poor boost. But Clark just waited on it. We'll take another look at it here. There you see him calling a 79-yard return. And the Oklahoma coverage just overran the play. Nothing but white shirts on the sidelines. Riddell, the only one left. He goes down 79 yards for Mike Clark. Touchdown. And there is Bedlam here in Norman. Blanchard on. He can tie it up. No, it's blocked. He tries to recover and does, but the play will be dead. And the Sooners maintain the lead. Oh, wow. Hang around. 11.42 to go in the half. It's 7-6 Oklahoma. Well, Clark's 79-yard punt return has got the juices flowing on both sides here now. The kick was blocked on the point after as Pat Jones talking things over with George Wallstead, one of his assistants there. But the Cowboys get their first touchdown of the game at 7-6. to six. And, Robbie, we talked before the game off here that usually in a game like this where the Cowboys are the underdog, they look for turnover, right. big plays offensively from Gundy, and the kicking game usually figures in somewhere, and it certainly has here this afternoon. Right, Terry Blanchard had hit 86 point afters in a row, so that snaps a rather impressive streak, and the kicking game also with the punt return, Bill. You're right. Oklahoma to take the kick at the 7, Duell Brewer. The 20, watch out, he could go with a hole there to the 30-yard line. Brewer, the freshman, all everything out of Lawton, Oklahoma, 5'8", 195. He's been averaging 25 yards per return. Here's take another, Clark. Yeah, take another look at the punt return. Boy, there's not a red shirt around except for Brad Riddell, and he's going to go down right there, and Mike Clark makes the cut, skips into the end zone, 79 yards for a touchdown. Joey Witcher was the blocker for Oklahoma State that took out Riddell. Mike Gundy's good buddy from Midwest City. All right, soon as with the football again now. First and 10. And no go on the play as Gaddis is stopped by Satterwhite and Bright. And you see Big Stacy there out of Welch, Oklahoma. And Bright, who was a surprise starter today, and now we know why. Gaddis takes the pitch here, but Oklahoma State gets right in there in a hurry. George Bright and uh, Stacy Satterwhite. Yeah, I think everybody's a little pumped up down there, Bill. Bright has been in on a lot of tackles. He's saying, well, first time I played all year, I got plenty of energy. <laughs> Second down and 11. Actually, a loss on that last play. The ball at the 29, and Collins to throw. Going to go right up the shoot to the 40-yard line, and he's got the first down. King Collins stopped by Sim Drain and Jay Fleshman, a sophomore from Sand Springs, Oklahoma. Now well, they have a play in the Oklahoma playbook that is a, a quarterback draw, but I think this time Collins was looking to throw, didn't find anybody, so, and you saw him protect the football there as he was hit at the 40 and fell to the 41. Sixth first down for OU. But Collins gets 12. He'd only gained 28 yards rushing in the game against Kansas on 15-6. First and 10 at the 41. On the option to get the 40. And hanging on, Fleshman takes the ride out of bounds at the 45 and a half, a pickup of four or so. Pretty good effort by Jay Fleshman. Well, the, the way you try and play this option is you try and string it out all the way to the boundary. Good pitch there to Gaddis, and now Jay Fleshman just runs out there and holds on to the stiff arm and gets Gaddis out of bounds. Boy, Gaddis is smooth. You can see why they're drooling to Norman over him. Second down and five at the 46 of Oklahoma. Collins with a pitch to Gaddis. Big hole, 50, 45, 40, and down to the 37-yard line of Oklahoma State. Rod Smith and Preston make the tackle. A lot of running room there for Gaddis, and you're not going to stop this offense all day. So you just have to try and be in position on each and every play. You see Sim Drain is the key man there as Perry takes him out. And now you're trying to stop one of the better running backs in the nation. Rod Smith comes over, but it's a pickup of 11. Another first down, and Gaddis is now over the 1,000-yard mark in his career at Oklahoma. 
Seven, six Sooners, they want more. With 10.15 to go in the half, here's Gaddis who can give it to him. Not this time, though. Jay Fleshman came up from the secondary to hammer it. Also, Reuben Oliver, junior from New Orleans. Take another look at the pitch here. Not much running room there. Fleshman in there to make the hit. Gaddis averaging around 16 carries a game. He's been a real workhorse this afternoon, though. 14 times for 60 yards. Second down and nine. Of course, there's a couple of blowout wins in there. We hasn't been needed the whole game. Leon Perry, the fullback, upended by George Bright. Boy, George Bright doesn't mind sticking him in there. Leon Perry, the ball carrier, and uh, George Bright just steps right up there and take another look at it. Perry takes the handoff. Bright is there and picks him up and pins him. Artie Guest brings in the play for the Sooners. Third and seven at the 33 of the Cowboys. Guest goes to the top of your screen. Long splits out wide right, and now Cooper will extend beyond him. Collins, nowhere to go. Looks like a broken play. Collins stopped by Bright and Oliver. Well, I don't think it, uh, Collins felt like he had anybody to pitch to. And then he's trying to look for some place to run, and he's got to end up going backwards a yard. We've got an illegal procedure call against Oklahoma. So we'll see what Oklahoma State wants to do here. If they take the play, it'll be a fourth down situation from about the 33-yard line, so it'd be about a 50-yard field goal attempt for R.D. Lasher. Pat Jones is saying just a moment ago, he wasn't saying anything, but he was taking the hand saying no, decline. And it is. Well, it's good they listen to him. <laughs> he yeah. says, I wish, his, yeah. I wish everything was so easy to communicate to my players. <laughs> now, stop them. <laughs> Block field goal. Now score. <laughs> Let's see here. Liddell holds Lasher. It is a 50-yarder for Lasher, who is 4-5 in field goals this year, as long as the 45-yarder. He's only missed from 35. And... Good! Lasher just barely hits a 50-yard field goal, and the hits just keep coming in this one, folks. Sooners tack on three. It's 10-6 Oklahoma. We'll be back. Lasher's longest field goal of the season has given Oklahoma now four points spread over the Cowboys, 10-6. Brad Riddell will kick off to Gerard Green and Curtis Mayfield for the Sooners, or for the Cowboys are, are deep. Here's Riddell. Freshman from Bedford, Texas in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Mayfield will bring it out. He's one of the best in the country. And the Sooners make him pay. He is stopped at the 17-yard line. Mayfield have been averaging 29 per return, ninth in NCAA stats. He was a little hesitant there, Bill. Mayfield, I thought he was going to take a knee in the end zone, but then he decided to come out. You take another look at R.D. Lasher, and remember, this is off the ground. R.D. Lasher hits it true from 50 yards away, his longest 45 against the Mexico State first game of the year. Oklahoma State starts at their own 17. Take a look at the scoring drive, 50-yard field goal, used almost three minutes. On first and 10, Vernon Brown dancing, looking for room, and oh, an abrupt halt brought to that dance by Terry Ray, and a flag is thrown. A final footnote to Lasher, he has now hit field goals in 10 consecutive games for the Sooners, his longest career field goal, a 53-yarder against Tulsa in 87. It's a holding call against Oklahoma State here as you take a look at Vernon Brown stacked up. He keeps to moving, trying to find some place to go. Terry Ray comes in there and makes the hit, but somewhere along that line of scrimmage, there was a holding call. And as we have a momentary break here, Robbie, I think about that Oklahoma State offense. Hey, it's great to get a punt return for a touchdown as they did the last time they touched the football. But your defense has been out on the field for quite a while right. now. It's important offensively that the Cowboys at least get some movement, keep the football, and give the Cowboy defense a bit of a break. Yeah, you're right about that, Bill. And, uh, and the Oklahoma State offense has to start in the hole now as the, as the play is erased. 
and uh, Oklahoma State will now start from their own nine yard line. Kirksey and Green split, split wide to the left at the bottom of your screen, Mayfield to the top, and here they are on first and 18 at their own eight, trailing 10 6. Brown, nope. Oklahoma stacking them up. Dante Williams, who played very well last week in the victory against Kansas. He's a senior from Gainesville, Texas. And James Good, the defensive end, a junior from Houston Yates High School, stopping Brown. Without the, the game breakers of a year ago, like Hartley Dykes or Barry Sanders, Oklahoma State forced to be a little conservative down here at the end of the field. You don't want to make any mistakes and give OU a quick opportunity. The Sooners are second in the league in rushing defense, giving up just 89 yards a game. And here they come on Gundy. On second and 15, complete, out of bounds at the 21-yard line, Curtis Mayfield. Still way short of the first down as the line of scrimmage was the 10. Gundy is slow to get up. A Sooner is down on the goal line. Mayfield coming over to look at his quarterback, Pudna. Well, I'll tell you what, James Good just pounced on Gundy just as he threw the ball. Nothing wrong with a hit. We've got another Sooner. Take another look at it here. There's going to be a great block come up right there. That's the, the player that is down. Dante Williams is down for OU. Now watch this uh, at the bottom of your screen, the completion to Mayfield, but James Good lands on top of Mike Gundy. And Gundy is a little sore. Take another look at it here from a different angle. Look at 39 to come up on. There he is. There's Good. And he throws, and uh, Good lands on top of Gundy. That does not feel good. Dante Williams down at the goal line after that tough block that gave Gundy a few more moments. He'll be helped off, and boy, the Sooners with enough injury problems already. And the one thing this football team lacks over the previous Sooner squads more than anything else is depth. And Gary Gibbs saw eight or nine players banged up last week losing three for the season and let's hope that Williams is going to be okay and for the Cowboys my goodness it's amazing to me that Gundy hasn't been hammered earlier in his career Robbie the fact that he's been able to come in game in and game out and just not take a severe blow well, you're absolutely right and uh, uh, how he got up from that one I don't know he's a little tender I guarantee you that but uh, he's a player third down his last crack at beating Oklahoma in his career. Third and six, 7.25 to go in the half. Nearly intercepted. Stepping up was Chris Wilson, and he had nothing but green ahead of him. He just scored. Cowboys will have to punt it away from their own 21-yard line with 7.23 to go in the half. At six feet tall, a little tough to see everybody, see over everybody down there on the field, and that one... Uh, Almost picked off, so Blanchard will come on to punt. He hit a 43-yarder his last time. That's Otis Taylor deep for the Sooners. He's at his own 44-yard line, and Blanchard standing on his own 11. Line of scrimmage is the 21. Poor kick, and out of bounds at the 49 of Oklahoma State. A 28-yard kick for Blanchard, and the Sooners are in business at the 49 of the Cowboys with a 10-6 lead. Yeah, that was just kind of end over end. They don't go very far that way. So with uh, 7-18 to go here in the second half, or the uh, second quarter, the Oklahoma State defense out there on the field, and Oklahoma starts uh, inside Cowboy territory, and here come the Sooners with the ball at the Oklahoma State 49. Cooper and Long split out to the left. Cooper now the tight end to the top of your screen. As Tink Collins, a freshman from Ponca City, gives to Perry. And he's out to the 30. Dennis, I beg your pardon, and inside the 25 and stopped at the 22-yard line. George Bright made the tackle. Oh, my, that's Mike Dennis. What a play. Pick up the 27 yards in a hurry. You take a look at it. Oklahoma does a good job of blocking this play. Walls off the right side, and now it's a foot race. Mike Clark can't hold on. And Gattis tiptoes down the boundary, finally pushed out of bounds after a pickup of 27 yards down to the, or uh, 24 yards down to the 25-yard line. His 42-yard pass reception set up the Sooners' only touchdown. 
Perry converted on a one-yard dive on Oklahoma's first drive. Clark, the 79-yard punt return to counter for the Cowboys. The kick was blocked, and then Lasher's 50-yard field goal. The Sooners have a 10-6 lead. First and 10. Gaddis stopped at the 28-yard line. George Bright making the tackle. Mike Clark came on a blitz that time. Take a look at George Bright. Take another look here at the pitch to Gaddis. You'll see number one, Mike Clark, get in there in a hurry. Kind of disrupts the play a little bit. And then George Bright is there to make yet another tackle. This, uh, this true freshman, George Bright, having a pretty good ball game there today. Jersey Village High School in Houston, Texas. And Bright's first action as a Cowboy. And saying his name a bunch. Second and 11 for the 27 of the Cowboys. And Collins to throw. No. And brought down from behind, Brandon Colbert. This Cowboy defense has only had now two sacks all season as Colbert gets his first, Santa White had the other. Take another look at Collins. He's got Leon Perry and Mike Gaddis in front of him. But Brandon Colbert able to track down redshirt freshman Tink Collins. Good effort by Brandon Colbert here. That's a loss of uh, about seven yards. Pat Jones has been impressed with Colbert, thinks he's on the verge of something big with the junior out of El Reno, Oklahoma. Third and 17, and Collins has time, finds his receiver, Cooper. It's complete at the 28, steps out of bounds at the 27. Devin Jones makes the tackle. Adrian Cooper, a junior from Denver South High School, 6'6", 250-pounder, his third reception of the season. Now, Cowboys had that well defense from the standpoint that they were not going to allow a receiver to get deep and pick up the first down. So it is a completion uh, of about seven yards, but uh, short of the first down, and that'll bring on Lasher again. Looks like he'll try about a 45-yarder here. Little breeze at his back. He hit on a 50 the last attempt. Sooners had an extra man on the field, and he runs off quickly. 45-yarder for Lasher, slight angle. 20 a foot this time, and it's good. Oklahoma. Puts up another tray, and we'll take a break as the Sooners up by 7, 13 to 6. Riddell to kick it off for Oklahoma. 5.45 to go in the half. The Sooners in control with a 13-6 lead, and the Cowboys to get the football again here. They keep it away from Mayfield. Gerard Green, a 10. 15, not backwards, hit again, and finally brought down. Boy, Green gave it all he had. They just kept coming. Yeah, they butted some heads out there. I'm telling you what, I'd be answering the phone if I was doing that. Take another look at the 45-yard field goal by R.D. Lasher. And the scoring drive for Oklahoma, 22 yards, four plays, used up a minute and a half. And Oklahoma out in front now, 13 to 6. I'll tell you, that, not a bad effort by the Oklahoma State defense, though, Bill, as Oklahoma started that drive inside Cowboy territory, and Cowboys only gave up three points. First and 10 at the 14. Bank on the draw. Gundy unloads, and really an ill-advised pass at that as Brown was covered well. Backus was putting the pressure on Mike Gundy. Gundy is now three of nine for 28 yards. Remember, he needs 81 yards at the start of today to become the all-time leading passer in Big A Conference history. But you see Bacchus bearing down on, on Gundy, who's pushed out of bounds. Ball goes incomplete, second and 10. Boy, great camera work. Mike didn't think it was so great. Second and 10 at the 14. Cowboys desperately need to get something going here. To just give their defense a rest or something else. And Brown can't find a hole as Williams and Blevins are both there for the Sooners. That Oklahoma defense starting to kick it in gear. Well, Dante Williams is in there, so that's good news from the standpoint that uh, he was injured earlier in the ball game, so he's back out on the field. Vernon Brown able, not able to pick up anything there, a loss of a couple of yards, so now a key third down situation for Oklahoma State as Robert Kirksey comes into a play. Comes in with the play. Oklahoma State, two of six in third down conversions today. Second and 11 at the 13 of the Cowboys. And out of the shotgun, Gundy. Incomplete off the fingertips of Kirksey. 
Banks was there to cover on the play. But the Cowboys are in a situation here that I think Robbie mentioned in their last series that without a host of big playmakers, and we haven't talked much about Hudson, who's out with a bruised knee, you can't be too bold offensively, particularly when you're backed up deep in your own territory. And Pat Jones just hoping that they keep him at bay. And that was a dangerous play many times just going over the middle, and Kirksey just couldn't come up with it. A little overthrown. Taylor back as Blanchard off of his own goal line. 40. And takes a bit of a cowboy bounce before it goes out of bounds. But the Sooners again, great field position at the Cowboy 45. Terry Blanchard. Not happy. Punting had been the highlight of his kicking game. And last week, he had a couple of field goals against Wyoming and got things going. And now this week, the punting has been doing. He missed the field goal attempt earlier today. Perry, Gaddis, Long. The back's in for Gary Gibbs, Oklahoma Sooners. They lead 13-6, 4.36 to go in the half. This is Ted Long. Hit hard after he crosses the 45 to the 43-yard line. Clark and Smith making the stop for the Cowboys. Gonna be second down and eight. Pickup of two. Take a look at Mike Clark, one of the big hitters in the Big Eight Conference. Clark, a couple of interceptions this year and the punt return here today for 79 yards and a score. He's become a big playmaker. Second down and eight. Gaddis cuts it up. Still going. 30. 25-yard line, Mike Gaddis. 18 yards on the play, and Gaddis is racking up the yard. Yeah, he's uh, at the 100 mark exactly right now. That was his 17th carry of the ball game for 100 yards, and what makes this play is a great cut by Mike Gaddis as he goes back across the grain. Now he's into the secondary, and Mike Clark hits him up high here. That's not where you want to tackle this guy, but he's finally able to bulldog him down at the 25. First and 10. Gaddis has surpassed last year's rushing yardage in this, the fifth game of the year. Perry on the carry. Gaddis last year, 516 yards and three scores. He was the Big 8 offensive newcomer of the year. Colbert and Satterwhite made the tackle on Perry that time. But Gaddis now with 525 yards this season. Brandon Colbert in on that last tackle. Second nine now from the Oklahoma State 24. Long goes wide left. Ross to the bottom of your screen. Out of the eye. He just toss it to Gaddis. Watch out. 15 10. Touchdown, Oklahoma. Mike Gaddis. And that's why they've given him that tag of the franchise. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. He had 172 yards last week. He's a he's a stud. You just have to hit him low because he is powerful, and you can see. It's just tough to bring him down, and now it's a foot race, and he's got good speed, and Fleshman can't grab him, so 24-yard touchdown run for Mike Gaddis. And for the point after, R.D. Lasher, Riddell to hold, and this one is good. The Sooners with seven more, and it's now a 20-6 Oklahoma football game and three minutes to go in the half. And Oklahoma's starting to wear down the Cowboys. Well, you can't give them good, good, good field position, Bill. They started that drive at their own 45-yard line. Take another look at the touchdown run here. Sim Drain uh, trying to make a tackle. Brandon Culbert trying to get in there. Fleshman's the last one. But you just can't give Oklahoma good field position. They started that drive from the Oklahoma State 45-yard line. They started their previous drive from the Oklahoma State 49 and got a field goal out of it. Oklahoma State trailing now 20 to 6. They have been three downs and out on their last two possessions. So you mentioned it earlier. The offense has to get something going here to try and keep uh, keep the defense off the field so they can get a little rest. Get a seventh touchdown of the season. Third in the Big Eight in scoring prior to today's game. 23rd nationally. Mike Gaddis out of Carl Albert High School in Oklahoma City, Midwest City, and there's the drive. Just four plays and 45 yards, and Gaddis 
taking it in. Riddell to kick off as Mayfield back with Green. Mayfield to the right there. Inside the five. And it goes in the end zone, and the Cowboys will say enough of that. Last time they got burned bringing it out. It'll be first and 10 from the Cowboy 20 with three minutes to go. And at this point, as you take a look again at Gaddis, I thought, though, Robbie, at this point, the Cowboys better be careful here. Sometimes it's just like the NFL, and teams become most dangerous in the last couple minutes, and it's going to take, uh, if it's four downs and kick, Oklahoma's going to get the ball in good position again as this breeze is picked up, and Blanchard has had trouble with the punting. Now Mike Gundy is out there. As you see, the Cowboys will be home next week to take on Kansas State. Gundy back out there. So he's not injured too badly after that blow by James Good. And Dante Williams made the tackle, so evidently he's okay, too, and that's good news. Brown picks up a yard, so now it'll be second nine from the 21. Give him two, maybe. Clock moving, 235. Remaining in the first half here in Norman. Just a picture-perfect day for football. 68 degrees of game time. Sooners trying to go 2-0 in the Big 8. They have Texas next week in Dallas. The Cowboys, as Robbie mentioned, Kansas State. You'll see that here. Gundy on second. It was tipped at the line. Intended for Mayfield. Backus got his hand on it, though. Big time. 6'5", 264-pounder as Gundy's pass was deflected. Gundy has missed his last five in a row now. He's hit on three of 11 for 28 yards. Makes it third down and nine at the Cowboy 21. OSU two of seven in third down conversions today. They could, they could use one right here. 2.16 left to go in the half. Oklahoma with one timeout remaining. So we'll see what happens here if the Sooners get a chance to get the football back. Gundy in trouble. Gonna keep. 25, needs five for the first down, and he's got it. He slides to the 30. Mike Gundy knew what he needed. It looked like he was headed for out of bounds, and then he seemed to almost think, wait a second, I gotta get a few more, and he got across that 30. Blevins made the tackle. Well, I, think that, I think that's the sign of a heads-up player here. Uh, Bill, because he knew exactly where he needed to be to get the first down, and as soon as he got across that 30-yard marker, 30-yard line, uh, he knew he had the first down. But we may have a problem here. I think it's a holding call against Oklahoma State. Didn't see the flag. Block stopped at 2.07, 20-6, Oklahoma. And in that kind of afternoon for the Cowboys here after an encouraging start. Oklahoma State took the opening kickoff and had a drive stall, and Blanchard missed a 34-yard field goal. The Sooners came back and went the length of the field, scored on a run by Perry. Cowboys moved it well before punting the next time and then stopped Oklahoma, and then Clark on a punt return of 79 yards, and it was a new ball game. Oklahoma State's been penalized twice for 20 yards today, Oklahoma three times for 15 yards. And boy, this one costly because instead of First down at the 30, and you can definitely eat up the clock then. Now, it's third and 19 at your own 11, and you know Oklahoma's gonna stop the clock if they can stop them here. Brown is stuffed on the shuttle pass. Wilson and Blevins, the linebackers, doing it for Oklahoma. Clock moving at 142. I'm a little surprised Oklahoma didn't call a timeout. Well, now there is one being called. Uh, Oklahoma not confused on this play. A little shuttle pass to Vernon Brown, but the linebackers are right there. Drop it for a two-yard loss, so Oklahoma State will have to kick as uh, Oklahoma did call timeout with 1.37 to go. They're going to get the ball back in good field position and still time to do something with it. That Oklahoma State defense uh, go out there and try and stop OU. Sunshiny day. Gary Gibbs on the OU sideline. Been in the Sooner program since 1974. Player, then of course assistant coach, defensive coordinator. Had opportunities to go elsewhere. And back interviewed with the LA Raiders and former OU assistant Mike Shanahan. And 
One rider in this area suggested fortunate maybe the job was not offered to him as defensive coordinator and Shanahan gets fired this week. Where would Gary Gibbs be today? Right. Had that job been offered and he had decided to take it, but by being patient and staying here at Oklahoma, he's now the head coach. And Pat Jones looking on as his Cowboys trailing by 14. Out of the end zone will be Blanchard kicking to Taylor. He's at the 46. Goes back to midfield. Signaled fair catch. And it'll be Oklahoma football at the Sooner 45. Nice kick by Blanchard that time. Yeah, 40-yard punt that time. Much better. So now Oklahoma, even though they have good field position, at least they're on their side of the 50. Maybe we'll see a little bit more of the passing of Tink Collins with 129 remaining to play. Collins, 6 of 13 for 107 yards on the year coming in. He had the big 40 two-yarder to Gaddis to set up the Sooners' first score today, but other than that, not much. Ike Lewis is in the backfield now. On the reverse, here they come. Ted Long, 30, 25, and up the fumble. But was the ball out of bounds? I'm afraid so. It is Oklahoma football. George Bright recovered it, but the ball was sliding out of bounds as Bright was, and the Sooners will have it first and 10 at the 20 of the Cowboys and what a play by Long. Yeah, 34 yard run here, wide open down the boundary. And you see Mike Wise out in front of him and the ball pops loose there after the hit by Drain. George Bright bounces on it, but the ball was out of bounds. So it'll be Oklahoma football at the Oklahoma State 20. Hey, that's a great call. At this point, something a little bit different. Give credit to the Oklahoma folks on that one as Caught OSU off guard, and now first and 10 at the 20 with 119 to go in the half. The Sooners threatening again. Collins. Rayner got him from behind. Bobby, a sophomore from Idabel, Oklahoma, number 37. Sooners will have to act quickly now. They are out of timeouts. But they're, of course, in midfield, and the way Lasher's booting them, you'd think they're going to have three for sure. Take another look at Bobby Rayner coming in from the backside. Oklahoma State defense that one very well. Second down. Collins. Safety pass to Ike Lewis. And they lost on the play. Lewis, second reception of the season. And Elmer Williams, redshirt freshman from Dallas, Texas, makes the stop. He's out of Kimball High School. Clock moving, 37 seconds. Sooners will have to hustle here with no timeout. Third and seven. Lewis couldn't get out of bounds. And Collins. Will keep the football. This may be costly if he doesn't throw it. And incomplete. And a smart incompletion, whether Long knows it or not. <laughs> if he catches the football, I don't know if there's enough time for Oklahoma to get the field goal unit on or get off another play. 22 seconds for me. Lasher is quickly out there on the field. This will be a 40-yard attempt as it's a fourth down play now. He's hit on 45 and 50 today. R.D. Lasher. 22 seconds to go. Riddell holding from 40. He just brings it down five each time. 50 and 45 and 40. And the Sooners with a 23 to 6 lead. Thanks to R.D. Lasher's third field goal this afternoon. Well, it's been a big second quarter for the Oklahoma Sooners as they've been able to take advantage of excellent field position and they punched in a couple of touchdowns and uh, three field goals from uh, R.D. Leisher. One touchdown and a field goal. Take another look at the 40-yard field goal by R.D. Leisher. Followed his brother Tim Leisher in here, a walk-on from Plano, Texas. And some strong legs in that Leisher family. Sooner fans enjoying the afternoon. Cowboy folks saying, hey, let's get this half over and regroup. Oklahoma scored a touchdown in the first quarter. Oklahoma State came back with a 79-yard punt return for a touchdown by Mike Clark. The point after was blocked to make it 7-6, and now Oklahoma's come back with three field goals and a touchdown. 
Rodell to kick it off to Green and Mayfield deep for the Cowboys. Green bobbles, brings it out. And he's brought down at the five yard line with nine seconds to go. Ike Lewis makes the tackle, Schmitterman also there. I'll tell you, Bill, there really needs, it looks to me like there needs to be more communication back there between the two deep men. Those guys have got no business running that ball out of there, take a chance of fumbling, give old Oklahoma another chance. Yeah, you got to help each other out. You bet. The receiver needs some help from the other deep man as to what the situation is. And when the screen bobbled it, you could tell he was going to have to break something big just to get him out of a hole. And nine seconds to go here. Gundy will just hand it off to Vernon, or to Cecil Wilson. And that'll be the final play of the half. Well, Oklahoma is in control as we break here in Norman at Owen Field. The Sooners, 23. Half ready to get underway here in Norman, Oklahoma, and Oklahoma State. The Sooners. Big A play, leading the Cowboys by the score of 23 to 6, and Oklahoma State will kick it off. The wind at the back of Kerry Blanchard, Duell Brewer, and Otis Taylor are deep for the Sooners. And signals are ready, and here comes the boot. Brewer, the goal line. 10, 20, he's got a hole, and out to the 30. That seems goes quickly, and a fumble. And flags are thrown also. Well, I think uh, I think that ball was fumbled after he was down, Bill, so I don't think that's a problem. Uh, and then we do have a flag back at the 22-yard line. As you see, the hole open up and then close as Duell Brewer is down. And there you see the ball pop loose. Vernon Victor with the recovery, but it'll go for naught. But Oklahoma is going backwards a bit. So this penalty will be against them. Probably a clip or an illegal block. This broadcast is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or reproduction of this telecast without the express written permission of Oklahoma State University is strictly prohibited. The Sooners now will operate in a bit of a hole. First and 10 from the 12, and Pat Jones must be thinking, hey, Let's see if we can't reverse the roles here. You get the Sooners pinned in their own territory, take advantage of the win and the field position. The important for the Cowboys to get off to a quick start here in the third. Gaddis dashes some hopes on that thought as he bolts for a first down. George Bright makes the tackle and give him 10. He got out to the 22-yard line. Well, Oklahoma State has been a very opportunistic ball club throughout the course of the year, Bill, as you take another look at Gaddis as he Picks up the 12th first down for OU today. That puts Gaddis at the 138-yard mark. They had six turnovers last week, or, or picked up six turnovers last week against Wyoming, but nothing today thus far. First and 10 at the 22. Second half just underway. Sooner football. Leon Perry, a fullback. Oklahoma with a 23-6 lead. Colbert and Satterwhite make the tackle for the Cowboys. Second down and six, the ball at the 26-yard line. Tink Collins, the quarterback, sends Long to the bottom of your screen. Guess to the top, out of the eye. Gaddis on the draw. Stop. Center White and Sean Mackey. Mackey from Barlow, Oklahoma, 6'3", 268, junior. Center White, the sophomore, 6'6", 262. Good surge from that defensive line there as Gaddis is hit and stopped immediately. Center White really having an all-conference type year, playing very well as one of the down linemen for Oklahoma State. Third down situation now. OU was 5 of 9 in the third down conversion department in the first half. That's impressive. Sooners. See if they put it up here. Collins was 4 of 12 for 23 of 6, and this one's fumbled, and Perry for the Gaddis comes up with it, but it puts the Sooners in a fourth and 
long situation as Sean Mackey was there to pounce on it. Yeah, that's just a bad pitch by Tink Collins. The uh, negative yardage, I guess, will go to, to Mike Data. Seems a bit unfair, yeah. but uh, <laughs> that's the way it goes, I guess. Like you need an official score in football. Yeah. Fourth and 19, and in the end zone is Riddell for just his second punt of the day. Clark returned it for 79 the first time. Not this time, though. Oklahoma's coverage is there. Artie Guest making the tackle. Nice punt by Riddell. Yeah, but good field position for Oklahoma State. I can't uh, have to go back through my notes to see the last time that they started at the 40-yard line. So uh, Oklahoma State now has an opportunity. They uh, they send Oklahoma three downs and out, or four downs and out, and uh, now Oklahoma State's got good field position at their own 40-yard line. First and 10 for Gundy and company, gives to Vernon Brown. He stopped at the 40 three-yard line by Chris Wilson, sophomore linebacker. Yeah, the Cowboys have started their drives today at their own 31, their own 22, their own 17, 14, 20, and 6. So this is their best opportunity yet as far as field position. See what they can do with it. Second and 7 at the 43. And Gundy. Up top, and it is incomplete, intended for Mark Walker across the middle. Had Robert Kurtzie coming from the other side, too. Uh, not the primary receiver on that particular play. Gundy has now missed his last eight in a row, I believe. So third and seven at the 43. Oklahoma. 12 minutes to go third quarter. Excuse sorry. me, Bill, I'm sorry. Uh, Oklahoma State, two of eight in the third down conversion department first half. And Gundy, good throw. Oh, Very close, but short of the first down as Wilson is stopped by Dante Williams. Boy, Cecil Wilson had a lot of running room if he had moved to the boundary, but a lot easier to see that from up here than it is from down there. But uh, take another look at Gundy as he completes a... Uh, an outlet pass here to Cecil Wilson, and if he turns around and starts running to his left, he's got plenty of room, but he, instead he runs into Dante Williams. Cowboys will go for it at midfield, fourth and one. Wilson, looks like he's got it. Cecil Wilson. You know, Pat Jones making some decisions. I think Robbie is he's looking in the long haul, and he's saying, hey, yeah, we want to get back in this football game, but if we can't get fourth and one from That's basically right. we're in the field, then we aren't a very good football team. I don't think he looks at it as necessarily a big gamble, but more of a necessity. No, that's right, and I, and I think uh, the offense will appreciate that, too, that if the coaching staff has enough confidence in them to the middle of the field to go for it. He wants to take advantage of this field position now in Sooner territory at the 49, first and 10. Brown in trouble. And for a moment, it looked like he was going to toss it back to Gundy. Frank Blevins made the tackle. Frank Blevins had a big ball game against uh, Arizona. Had 18 tackles, a career high. There you take another look at Vernon Brown. And boy, just no place to go. Blevins, Bacchus, Wayne Dixon all in there. Known as the stick man, but not necessarily for his hips, but his no. lean build. Right. Doesn't look like a linebacker. No. 205. Six foot four. Second and 11. Gundy trying to buy some time and has to scramble again. Evans couldn't get in and Gundy got out of bounds. Short of the first down. Whoa. Dives over that bench area. There's going to be a flag thrown, too. Flag a little aggressive there by Chris Wilson. He didn't really touch him very hard, but you don't need to when everybody's running full speed. And Gundy appears to be all right. Take another look at it here. Runs away from Scott Evans. Now he's got some running room, but now you see he's safely out of bounds, and Wilson just kind of trying to stop himself, but when everybody's going like that, it doesn't take much of a bump. Yeah, I don't think there was anything intentional there. Wilson trying to put the brakes on himself, and Gundy just happened to be the guy that had the momentum in front of him. Gundy's had a pretty rough day today. Oh. James Good pounces on him, and now he runs into a concrete wall. 
Oklahoma State picks up 15 more yards. Crowd doesn't like it, but uh, Oklahoma State now with the ball close to the Oklahoma 25-yard line. And a better look as Wilson. I don't blame the crowd. They can't see the replay like we can, but uh, I don't think Wilson uh, had much to do with Gundy ending up in the position he did. Just no place to go no. except uh, show pretty good form there on that high jump over the uh, bench. <laughs> well, gosh knows, Oklahoma State can certainly use a break and first possession here. You see the penalties, the Cowboys two for 40 and or two for 20. The Sooners getting that one and now it'll be a first and 10 at the Oklahoma 26 with a timeout call. And 15 to go here in the third quarter. Pat Jones talking to Brent Guy. Oklahoma State, Robbie, if they get a score here, maybe they're thinking this thing could turn a little bit in their direction. Well, Certainly a key possession. I think they've got to get something out of this drive. Well, and we've seen it happen before throughout the course of the season. If you do get a score, it changes the complexion of the game. Gundy got time, and he makes the best of it. It's complete to the tight end, Vance Tice. Stopped by Chris Wilson at the 19, short of a first down. Nice throw and catch there as Vance Vice. Gundy's got time here, and he throws it out to, to Vance Vice, who turns it upfield, a little short of the first down, eight-yard pickup. And think about it, how often has he had that kind of time this season? Second and one. Nothing fancy, and Cecil Wilson is stopped by Chris Wilson. Short again. They'll mark it again at the 18, and it'll be third down now and one. Cecil Wilson with a carry, and Chris Wilson is right there to stop the play. Mike Gundy now, six of 15 through the air for 40 yards. He is 41 yards away from becoming the all-time leading passer in Big A Conference history. Wilson does not get it. In fact, loses on the play. El Market, maybe at the original line of the 18. So it'll go for just no game, but it is fourth down and one now. And another big decision for Pat Jones. Do you try to pick up the three? It'll be a 35, it'll be a 45 yarder actually. I really think they need sixes, Bill. Uh, you know, get threes later, but let's keep the ball away from the Oklahoma offense. Let's try and get the first down. Let's try and get a touchdown. Fourth and one. The Sooner crowd comes alive. Dundee. To just unload it. It's complete. Walker at the five. First down. Oh, Baba. Mark Walker. Then hang up there, baby. I'll get you eventually. Kevin Thompson made the tackle. I, I would like to talk to Mike Gundy. I don't believe he was throwing for Mark Walker. I think he was trying to throw it deeper in the end zone. James Good again applies the pressure, but that. Fly, dying quail just landed in the hands of Mark Walker who does a great job of catching it and maintaining his balance as Oklahoma State comes to the line of scrimmage now on a big first down play. First and goal at the five for the Cowboys. Looking to throw again. And he throws it away. Good defense from the secondary by Oklahoma. Gundy had a little bit of time but things were covered. Wilson and Dixon were after Gundy. After that 13-yard completion to Mark Walker, now Gundy just uh, 28 yards away from becoming the leading passer. Begin here. You see it come down again. <laughs> Walker just just came right underneath that. Second and goal from the five. Four, Packers makes the tackle. Hey, folks, it doesn't come easy against this bunch here. 
as Oklahoma's only given up two touchdowns all year from scrimmage. Of course, the touchdown the Cowboys scored was on a 79-yard punt return today. That's only three all year that Oklahoma's given up in any pass. Yeah, Oklahoma's only given up 22 points in four ball games coming into today. So there's a reason why they're fourth of the nation in total defense. Third and goal from the fourth. wraps him up. Wayne Dixon, a senior out of Border, Texas. 6'4", 240 pounders. And an interception of a Gundy pass last year in the game. Timeout is called. 721 remaining to play in the third quarter. Cowboys opening drive will be back with the big play in just a moment. competitive world we live in and this is the country we want ahead of the competition these are the people we'll be depending on to keep this country ahead of the competition these are the colleges and universities we're relying on for the people we're depending on to keep this country ahead of the competition so if you want america to stay number one in the world do something about it give to the college of your choice A heritage that spans 53 years. Thrilling moments in Cotton Bowl history are recaptured. Home Sports Entertainment takes you back in time and brings you another epic Cotton Bowl battle. Texas battles Notre Dame in the 1970 Cotton Bowl Classic. The Mobile Cotton Bowl Classic. Join us here on Home Sports Entertainment and toast the Cotton Bowl tradition. Steel. Muscle. It takes one to perfect the other. And nobody knows that better than Soloplex. Before you take your Soloplex through its workout stations, we put it through some of our own. We start with raw materials. Use force and resistance. Knowledge and skill, effort, and technique to create a strong, balanced, and functional work of art. All of which goes to show the way we build Soloflex is a lot like the way you use it. For a free brochure, call anytime. Welcome back. We pick things up now. Fourth and goal at the two. 721 remaining third period. Cowboys have had the football the entire quarter. And it looks like Oklahoma State's decision is to go for a field goal, Robbie. Cowboy fans may disagree, but I think Pat Jones says, hey, I need three scores. Two touchdowns and a field goal. So I might as well take it if I can get it here. Beware of the fake, though. Nope. Blanchard. Puts it through the upright, and the Cowboys do get three. Well, and it's 23 to nine. We'll take a break. We'll comment about the decision in just a moment. 7:18 to go in the third period. 23-9 sooner.
force. Introducing the revolutionary trim cut sanding disc. It's made of a super tough nylon bonded with a rugged industrial abrasive. Trim cut's easy to use and won't tear or fly off. It's on and locked in just one step and cleans like new in seconds. Trim cut outlasts ordinary sandpaper discs 50 to 1. Order your trim cut now for only $19.95. You'll get three 5 inch and three 3 inch trim cut discs. You'll also receive these free gifts just for trying trim cut a disc cleaner, safety goggles, leather work gloves, lawnmower blade balancer, a buffing pad, and a protective mask, all absolutely free. If you're not satisfied for any reason, return the unused disc for a full refund and keep everything else as our gift. To order Trim Cut, call toll-free 1-800-421-6400 or send check or money order for $19.95 plus $4 shipping and handling to the address on your screen. Order now. Call 1-800-421-6400. Lancher to kick it off with the Cowboys scoring a field goal and turning 23 to 9. Duel Brewer inside the five. The 20 and picked up. Looks like Victor got it. With 7.13 to go in the period, Todd Fisher made the tackle on Brewer. And the Cowboys, here's the field goal. Take another look at Kerry Blanchard, the fifth leading field goal kicker in the nation. And I'll tell you, Bill, I really think that Pat Jones went. Uh, you know, on, on fourth down a couple of times, 58-yard scoring drive, 14 plays, used up 5.21 on the clock, 19-yard field goal. But he doesn't want to come away empty-handed. So when you're down there, get something out of it. Would agree. And here's Ike Lewis, Sooner's second possession of the half. Lewis tripped up and a penalty flag is thrown. Last time, OU had to punt out of its own end zone, and then the Cowboys using up five plus minutes to get three. And this penalty is against Oklahoma. So the Sooners are going to be backed up again. This is the same way the last drive uh, went for Oklahoma. They had to start a little deeper in their own territory after a penalty. They ran four plays and punted. And then Oklahoma State put together a 14-yard drive, got a field goal out of it. You look at Pat Jones, I think he also had to figure if they don't get the touchdown and they go for it there, his team might be devastated. The young bunch, they haven't had much success. How do they come back from that? Get the three, see what happens. <laughs> Collins to throw on first and 20, going for broke. And it is incomplete. Joe King was covering. The attendant receiver was Arthur Guest. Already guess out of John Marshall High School, Joe King broke his ankle a week before the first game, but uh, worked all week. So that's a plus for Oklahoma State to have him back there in the secondary. And Jason Jewell is the guy who uh, has to go back to the bench now that Joe King comes back. But that's that's okay because Jason Jewell's got four games experience now, makes him a better player, has three interceptions to his credit. So Oklahoma State able to build a little depth in their secondary because of that set of circumstances. Ross goes wide to the top of your screen as the Sooners will operate on second and 20 from the 12. This is Lewis, and he is brought down behind by Stim Green. Hey, Lewis has got great speed. That's not easy. Freshman out of Dallas, Texas, played at Wilmer Hutchins High School, the also high school that produced former Sooner great Ricky Dixon. Well, Sim Drain's got pretty good speed himself, and uh, Ike Lewis has got 4-5 speed. Uh, Drain's got the angle on him and holds on to him and drags him down. And Pick now, up a three. third and 17, and let's see what kind of pressure the Cowboys could put on Oklahoma. They have a chance to force a fourth and long and get good field position to take hold here. Lewis on the draw. from the officials yet. Well, I'm seeing a little displeasure with Oklahoma State players down there, so it would appear like they don't have the football, but Ike Lewis gets into the secondary in a hurry. Rod Smith wraps him up, and there's the ball loose. My oh. goodness gracious. Bright had a hand on it, and then the pile came in, and he obviously lost it in the battle. Riddell will punt. Clark is deep for the Cowboys. But what a difference now. Instead of booting out of his own end zone, Lewis has given him a chance. He'll kick it from his own 20. 
line of scrimmage is the 31. Clark at his own 30, lets it bounce, it takes a sooner roll, but goes out of bounds. Fortunately for Oklahoma State, or it would have been inside the 10-yard line. Well, even worse, Bill, Oklahoma State thinks they should have had the football at the 31-yard line. Now mm -hmm. they have it at their own 19. They can turn around quickly. 5.34 to go in the third period. Cowboys to get their second opportunity here. Scored on Blanchard's field goal the last chance. And it'll be first and 10 from their own 19. And what a swing. We'll be back with more after this timeout. Scout Tommy Mansky has made some startling discoveries. But the stride basically Teaching the mechanics of the Major League Swing is an exciting new video program by which aspiring young players and coaches can join actual training classes at Central Florida's highly acclaimed indoor training center, Baseball World. Rotate. Through these revolutionary new drills designed by Scout Mansky and his diligent study of the Major League Swing, you too will be able to isolate the components common to the accomplished Major League hitter. We have to start with our back Teaching leg. the mechanics of the Major League Swing is simple and straightforward and it works for all ages and ability levels hi i'm glenn davis i'm so impressed with this teaching video by tommy maskey that i've given it my complete endorsement and when you watch it you'll know why call toll free now 1-800-833-1551 to order your video cassette of teaching the mechanics of the major league swing that's 1-800-833-1551 I didn't want to do it. I, just, I didn't either. I didn't I want to do it. Well, I thought that we wouldn't be able to party if they were there. Yeah, I thought that. I know. You know, all of a sudden, somebody, I don't even remember who it was, said that, you know, what about inviting the older people and making it a senior's prom, you know, including the senior's you think about people, they seem like they're so lonely and stuff. It was just good to be a part of it yeah. and come in there and make them feel all really yeah. special and stuff like they're wanted and go up and dance with them. But they made us yeah. feel good, too. Another young man came and cut in, and it was so fun because that hasn't happened to me since I was a kid. I was kind of embarrassed, but I just went up and I said, you know, hey, good take. You know? <laughs> and, and she says, yeah, you too. <laughs> I think we showed them a thing or two, and I think we outdanced a lot of them. It was almost like just having them that happy was like, they gave me back the world. Yeah. Whenever someone, somewhere, serves someone else, there is truly cause to celebrate. A message from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. We're inviting him back for Valentine. First and ten, Gundy to throw. Wide open is Green at the 40. He spins and stays on his feet. And he's out near midfield. The Cowboys finally get a big play as Perry Ray makes the tackle on Gerard Green. It was first and 10 from the 19. They pick up 30 to go to the 49. That now makes Mike Gundy the all-time leading passer in Big 8 Conference history. He now has 8 of 18 for 83 yards today. He needed 81. And Gerard Green, what a big moment for Mike Gundy with this pass right here, a 30-yard completion to Gerard Green. Now the Sooners pick one off and drop it. It'll be incomplete as we come back to live action. Jason Belcher did everything but kick it. Yeah, I think he was trying to pitch that ball off. Wearing Ricky Dixon's old number. Take another look at it right here. This ball is in and out of the hands. Belcher's got it, and now I think he's trying to... Well, maybe not. I take that back. And Gundy's defense... Cowboy receivers have dropped so many footballs this season, Robbie, and when you throw over the middle, if you aren't sure-handed, that's what's going to happen to you, and I can understand the Cowboys' conservative ways. Now they go outside, and on second and ten, it is complete first down to Gerard Green. All of a sudden, OSU's looking like a fine offensive football team again. Franks was covering. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, Bill, what this does is uh, perhaps opens up the running game a little bit. Now that secondary has to be a little bit more cautious, and these receivers are wide open. Gerard Green tied for 16th on the OSU all-time receiving list. He's had a good career here at Oklahoma State. First and 10 of the 38, Cowboys trail 23-9. Gundy overthrows Walker this time. He was well covered, though, by James Good. And flags are thrown after the play. Like Bacchus of the Sooners and a couple of the Cowboys offensive linemen 
had words or something. Roller and Webb for the Cowboys. It's against Oklahoma State. And that will infuriate Pat Jones to have a good looking drive set back on a personal foul. Oh. Now, no excuse for those kind of mistakes. Yeah, a little frustration perhaps, uh, Bill, and I imagine there's a little trash being talked to each other out there on nah. the field today. You don't <laughs> think so? These guys are all good buddies, aren't they? <laughs> well, the media probably makes more of the bedlam than the players do. <laughs> yeah, kind of scary when you get this many media folks together that know each other, too. Second down and 19 now. The ball on the Cowboy, 47. Gundy again wanting to throw. Still looking. Got a man. Green can't hang on, but it is complete. It is complete at the 22 to Mayfield. Oh, mama. Hold on is right. Mayfield got that ball after it was tipped. And the Cowboys have been first and 10 at the 22 of Oklahoma. Look at this. Well, that, this is an unbelievable 32-yard pickup here off the hands of Green into the hands of Mayfield. It's the old tip drill, right? Yeah, right. That's why you practice that. Usually it's the secondary that practices that, though. Well, I'll tell you what, though, Bill. We got a ball game here. Oklahoma State runs this in or gets it into the end zone for a touchdown. You know, then we're talking about a seven-point ball game here. Here's Vernon Brown. He goes across the 20, picks up four to the 18. Mike Gundy, with the exception of that throw to Walker, has hit three of his last five, but another was dropped. He's thrown four of the best passes he's thrown this year, Robbie, as far as the series. I can't remember any game in which he has clicked so consistently as he has on this drive. Whether they've caught him or not, the ball's been right, right there. Yeah, you're right. Second and six at the 18. Gundy again. And it's complete at the 10. It's a first down. Mark Walker makes the reception. Greg DeCrazy makes the stop. And the Cowboys are ripping the Sooners through the air. Remember, this Sooner pass defense was first in the league, eighth in the nation, giving up 116 per game. Thrown. Uh, Greg DeCrazy makes the stop right there. Thrown right in front of him. But Gundy put it right on the money. This drive started at their own 18-yard line. There have been some big plays. A 30-yard pass to Gerard Green. A 32-yard completion intended for Green, uh, Green, but caught by Mayfield. And it is first down at the 10. Brown, nothing. And boy, here's where the Sooner wall seems to just grow bigger. Well, it gets a little tougher down here. The field narrows. The secondary doesn't have to play as deep. Stacy Dillard making the stop on that last play. But still at all, Oklahoma State has had the football uh, for a long time here in the second half when you take into consideration their two drives. And they have a chance to punch the ball in and uh, and make something of the ball game. They trail 23 to 9 here. The touchdown puts them right back in it. Steve Roller, the offensive lineman, was hobbled a bit, but he stays on. It's second down. And goal from the eight. And a timeout is called by Mike Gundy. Saw something he didn't like. And the Cowboys realize the importance of the situation. We'll take a break with a 23-9 sooner. It's I'm nervous. It's I'm shy. It's I'm happy. It's goodbye. It's I'm late. I should It's I'm glad I'm it's long distance, and with Southwestern Bell Telephone One Plus Dial, it's the easiest way to let someone know how you feel. Your Dodge dealer announces the best, the biggest ever sale on trucks, because we've got big cash on more truck models in stock than ever before. Get the biggest cash back ever, $2,000 on our most popular half-done pickup. Save up to $4,100 when you add package savings. Or get an unprecedented $1,500 cash back on Dakota. Plus, big cash on Dodge Club Cab, new for 90. Get a ton of money on tons of trucks now. Come by and see us at Johnson's of King Fish and Chickasha, your Dodge Chrysler Plymouth dealer. 
They're roaring at Owen Field. Oklahoma State threatening, trailing 23-9, 258 to go third period. Second down and goal. The ball at the eight-yard line of the Sooners. Gundy has hit seven of his last ten passes, Bill. Tough to run against OU. See what Mike does here. Pinch out, Brown. And a herd of tacklers for the Sooners run him out of bounds. Maybe a loss in the play at the yeah. nine. Terry Ray, Chris Wilson among them. Just a straight pitch here. Nothing fancy but Oklahoma defense able, able to string the play out. And they run Vernon Brown out of bounds after a loss of a yard. So a third down situation now for Oklahoma State. Two of 11 in that department for today. Big third down play here. Bill. Cowboys have had the only scoring in the third quarter when their last drive stalled and Lancer did a 19-yard field goal, but they really need six here. Third and goal from the knock. Gundy trying to call the signals. Lobbing it for Green. Incomplete. Thompson was shadowing him. And Blanchard will come on for Oklahoma State. Well, again, Pat Jones doesn't want to get down here and come away with nothing. We've seen Gundy throw that fade pass to uh, that corner of the end zone before. That one just a little too long for Gerard Green. Perry Blanchard hit nine of 14 field goals this year. Fifth leading kicker in the nation. Well, here's Blanchard. One of two today. 26-yarder is good. And the Cowboys get three more. It is now 23 to 12. As Oklahoma State back-to-back -back field goals by Kerry Blanchard. And what a strange game this has been, Robbie. At halftime, visiting with some of the media mongrels, and everybody was saying, well, it seems to be a matter of time, and Oklahoma State will probably fold its tent. And they come out and dominate offensively if not on the scoreboard with touchdowns but control the football here and now you wonder about that Oklahoma defense and whether or not it might tire a little it's really getting a challenge here well the offense has done its job Bill by putting together a couple of long drives here as you take another look at Terry Blanchard that's given the Oklahoma State defense a time to rest I think the defense has played pretty well today anyway uh, the Oklahoma offense has not done a great deal. We've still got uh, 246 left in the third quarter. Still a lot of football left. Oklahoma State has to come up with two scores, or two touchdowns to regain the lead. But Oklahoma State playing much better here in the second half than they did in the first half. And I think it has to do with field position and the offense being able to sustain a drive. 71 yards on that drive, 11 plays, 248 off the clock. Here comes the kick from Blanchard. It goes to Otis Taylor, and he will down it. It'll be first and 10 Oklahoma at the 20 of the Sooners, and Gary Gibson crew probably thinking, hey, it's about time our guys move this football a little bit, gave the defense a break, and getting too close for comfort as the Cowboys are hanging tough, even though they have been unable to get into the end zone other than Clark's 79-yard punt return way back to start the second quarter. 23-12 in this Bedlam battle. Gary Gibbs going through his first as a head coach, but has been through the wars many years here in Oklahoma. Collins, the quarterback, Barry Dennis along the back behind him. And gets the wide out to the top of your screen. Long puts out to the bottom. Here's Gaddis to a huge hole. 35. And out to the 38-yard line. Fleshman and Smith made the tackle and Seems to be a pretty good thing to do when you need to get things going offensively. Doesn't well, it? especially when you've got an offensive line that can open a hole like this. Good blocking up front, as you wow. see. A big hole there, and Gaddis quickly into the secondary. Fleshman and Smith make the stop. 18-yard pickup for Mike Gaddis, who is now 149 yards for today on 21 carries. First and 10 at the 38, the Sooners with the lead in the football. Cowboys come up with a big turnover. 
Well, that's that's what we're talking about right there. Oklahoma State overran it for a moment there, but David Brooks got it. It was laying on the keister of, I believe, Reuben Oliver. <laughs> Take a look at 55 here, and it comes right on his hind end. There's Devin there Jones. Is. But Oklahoma State scrambles for it, and now they've got great field position. First turnover of the day. Oklahoma State has it at the Sooner 35. Well, this will be interesting if something big happens. And Gundy's going to try to make it happen. He dumps it. Tom Backus was all over Gundy. Walker, the intended receiver, if you will, he was the closest one to the football. Sooner fans don't like it, want an intentional grounding. Right. There was a receiver in the area, though, and that's the, that's the way the rule reads. Wasn't going to be able to catch it, but uh, you can see the receiver was right there, Mark Walker, I believe. So it'll be a second and ten play now for Oklahoma State. Well, Oklahoma State had six turnovers last week, or took six turnovers from Wyoming, and that was a big factor in the Cowboys' victory against the Cowboys. Let's see if Oklahoma's missed you can open the gate. Gundy, incomplete is for Mayfield. Third down and 10 now at the 35. Franks was covering Curtis Mayfield. It's amazing how the score gets a little closer. The intensity seems to pick up a bit, Bill. Yeah, particularly <laughs> defensively that you time bet. for Oklahoma. You is bet. Geared up, and the crowd woke up here a little bit, sitting back comfortably. And the crowd over to O'Connell's, the bar across the street, is headed back toward the stadium, too. <laughs> Third and ten for the Cowboys from the 35 of OU. Gundy can't find anyone. It is incomplete at the 19. It would have been a sensational grab by Gerard Green. Thompson was all over him. Green juggled it for a moment, just couldn't quite come up with it. Well, three plays that time. Yeah, this was almost an unbelievable catch. As again, Gundy tries to float it over the defense, and Green gets a hand on it, and again, but it, it comes loose. Big and hit by Thompson. And look at this. Terry Blanchard going for a 52-yard field goal. A 52-yarder from Blanchard. It's long enough. It's good! Blanchard! The uprights from 52 yards away, and the Cowboys have pulled within eight. 156 to go in the third period. It's 23 to 15. I'll tell you what, Bill, that could have been a 60-yard field goal easy. That thing had a lot of room to spare. That ties Kerry Blanchard's career best at the 52-yard field goal. Came last year against Missouri when he hit a 52-yarder, and Blanchard now making this thing interesting. Cowboys do take advantage of the turnover. I think most people probably thought, oh, if you're a Cowboy fan, shame here. Three downs and they're turning over, but no. No, they end up getting three out of it. Tremendous field goal by Kerry Blanchard. And now, a lot of football left to play. We've got ourselves a game. Oklahoma State just a touchdown and a two-point conversion away from tying this little puppy up. And 156 to go in the third. Pat Jones. There's a little bust right now. Things are getting exciting down there. Back, Brewer and Taylor again for Oklahoma. Blanchard trying to boom another one here. The Sooners went at the half, 23 to 6, but Blanchard three field goals has cut it to 23-15. This one to Brewer and out of the end zone it goes. So the Sooners will have it first and 10 on their own 20. Here's some flags thrown. We have some extra curricular going on. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, nobody's going to be intimidated in this ball game today. I promise you that. Hey, but the cooler heads that prevail here, this could be a big factor in the football game with field position again. If this is against Oklahoma, watch out. Cowboys are indicating it is. We'll wait and see. It may be offsetting. Cowboys, after that fumble recovery, the 35 yards, four plays. Actually, a 52-yard field goal by Kerry Blanchard. 35 yards and four plays. Took them to 24 seconds, set up by the Mike Gaddis fumble. Oklahoma State turns it into three points. Trail 23-15 with 1.56 to go as officials are still discussing the, the flag thrown on the kickoff.
We'll wait and see what happens here. Well, I'll tell you what, Oklahoma State has certainly grabbed the attention of everybody in the stadium, especially the Sooner football team, because they have dominated the play in the in the second half of the ball game here in the third Rich quarter. Dead ball, personal foul on the receiving team. We'll go half the distance. It'll be first down and 25. Half the distance Coach to the Gibbs. goal. Coach Gibbs will not be happy about that. That's that's a mistake that the players shouldn't make uh, if you're if you're doing something aggressively during the course of a play and make a mistake that's different but that that's a penalty that no head coach is going to like well and for a run-oriented football team to operate at first and 20 from your own 10 with a freshman quarterback it puts some heat on them let's see if the cowboys can take advantage of the sooner mistake they go to gaddis brooks brings him down he gets back to the 20. So he picks up 10, <laughs> Smith and Brooks, David Brooks makes the tackle, and now it'll be second down at 10. Take another look at the pitch and another good hole for Mike Gaddis. Mm. And he turns it upfield and, uh, up and picks up 10 yards. Brooks and Smith are there to make the stop. Cowboy defender, I couldn't see which one it was, tried to intercept that shovel, that lateral, and end up costing. Gaddis again, and he scoots for big yard. He's 35, 40. He's gone. 40, 30, 10. Touchdown, Oklahoma. Mike Gaddis. 80 yards. An 80-yard touchdown run by Mike Gaddis. Touchdown run by Mike Gaddis. Boy, the Sooners just strike back in a hurry. Start first down at 20 from their own 10-yard line. Two plays. They go 90 yards. All of them by Gaddis. Lasher for the point after. And timeout by Oklahoma here. Mike Gaddis has now carried the ball 24 times today. For 236 yards, that's a career high for him. He had 213 yards last year against the Oklahoma State football team. And his best this season was last week, 172 against Kansas. A couple of back-to-back -back Saturday performances that will open up some eyes around the country, not just the Big A Conference. Well, he's, uh, you know, he's got uh, all the size and speed that you want in a tailback. He's big, he's strong, he's fast. He's put on quite a performance today. He's a difference maker. His 43-yard pass reception keyed Oklahoma's first touchdown of the ball game. He had a 24-yard for a score that made it 20 to 6 with a point after. And then now, just as Oklahoma State really threatens and gets things going, he comes out of a hole and gets 10 on a first and 25 and then 80. There it is, real simple. 90 yards, two plays. Took it 50 seconds. 80-yard touchdown run by Mike Gaddis, who's now rushed for 236 today, a career high for the sophomore from Carl Albert High School in Midwest City. Lasher, there's Gaddis, catching a well-deserved breather as Lasher will try for the point after. No problem. As Oklahoma makes it a 20 to 15 ball game. Some third quarter, folks. Man, he got that right. Take another look at it. Gaddis, with that great mobility, finds the running room, and now it's a foot race. Joe King almost runs him down. So I'd say that broken ankle for Joe King is okay because he almost runs down. Mike Gaddis gets him at the one. But Gaddis gets in for the 80-yard touchdown run. <laughs> and does, does his dance on his back. What talent. That's break dancing, isn't it? Oh. So we'll see what Oklahoma State does. Still in the third quarter. There's been much happening here in the last four minutes of this quarter. Yeah, had that opened things up for Oklahoma, you might think, okay, it's done for the Cowboys, but the way the Cowboys have been able to move the football, don't go away just yet. 106 to go in the third, as Robbie mentioned, and 
Mayfield and Green are back as Riddell will kick it off for the Sooners. Oklahoma with a 30 to 15 lead. Oklahoma State has won their last two conference openers, both of them against Colorado. Have to start conference play this year against Oklahoma. Wouldn't want to open against Colorado either this year. Sure do. Buffalo's neat business. Yeah, they're good ball players. Oklahoma State will have Colorado in Stillwater this year. All right, we're all set to go. Here's the kick from Riddell. Bobble and Green will say enough. Enough of those bad decisions were made in the first well, half. You know, and you saw Curtis Mayfield get over there right in his face. So there seems to be a little more communication down there, Bill. And now the Cowboys will have a first and 10 from their own 20. Don't forget next week, Kansas State and Oklahoma State. And for those of you in the Oklahoma area, that is a 3 p.m. kickoff because of homecoming. Hope you have a chance to see it in person. If not, check your local listings for the air date in your area. Dundee completes to green at the 28-yard line. A pickup of eight. Frank's covering on the play. Mike Dundee looking for Gerard Green. Nice catch. Keeps his foot in bounds. Pick up of eight. I think, uh, you know, it seems to me, Bill, that Oklahoma State has decided that the only way they're going to be able to move the ball is to throw. Here's Vernon Brown. Open they go open up. Oh, one more man, and he would have been off for the races. Got the first down is Brown out to the 35, maybe 36 yard line. Belser and Ray made the tackle and Brown being used less here in the second half because of what you're talking about, Robbie, but maybe this will give him some better opportunities. Runs by Wayne Dixon and Charles Franks, runs over Terry Ray and is finally pushed out of bounds after a pickup of eight. On the first down for Oklahoma State. Brown had 51 yards on 15 carries in the first half and he's limited use here in the second. First and 10 of the 36. Dundee in trouble, lost the football. That's anybody's ball. Oklahoma recovery. At the 19, Frank Clemens with a fumble recovery for the Sooners. And that may turn the tide. Boy, that was, I'd like to see that again, Bill. Difficult call. It's a judgment call as to whether the arm was in motion or not. If it's going forward, it uh, becomes an incomplete pass. We'll take another look at it here. Coming, the pressure comes from the back side. You see, well, I don't know. I guess not. James Good is the one that knocked the ball loose. Good's been in that backfield quite a little bit today. First fumble recovery of the year for Blevins at yeah, Sooner goes Football. As, goes as a fumble. First and 10 at the 22 of Oklahoma State. Dennis powering his way. Across the 15 to the 13, Rod Smith makes the tackle. And Why get fancy? Oklahoma saying haven't stopped him all day. No. We'll keep shoveling it to the big man. Now, look at that. Oklahoma State rushing for 70 yards today. Oklahoma now at 332. Oklahoma came into this ball game averaging 370 yards a game on the ground. We've got another quarter to go. Second and one, the 13. And the first time today, Mike McKinley, sophomore fullback from Perrytown, Texas, stopped by Devin Jones. McKinley, 57 yards rushing of the season coming in here, 6.3 per carry. Gets the first down, and he'll go out. Perry, I believe, will come back in. But that's the end of the third quarter. Oklahoma with a 30 to 15 lead over Oklahoma State will be back with the fourth quarter here at Owen Field in Norman in just a moment. We go to the fourth quarter. You see the passing yardage. We showed you the rushing yardage a moment dominated by Oklahoma and 
The Sooners, though, they got 43 of that on one play that set up their first score, so it's not like they haven't been effective through the year. Well, and they, uh, you know, they run the football, so they're not going to, they've thrown seven, attempted seven passes today. Mike Gundy's put it up 28 times, completed 12 of them for 143 yards, and in the process has become the all-time passing leader in Big 8 Conference history. And with uh, one more quarter to go in this game and six more games to go in the season, Mike Gundy could uh, he could put that record out of sight for somebody. Mm. Passing Frank Sire today. Adrian Cooper and the Sooners getting ready to start the fourth period here. It'll be first and ten inside the eleven. They could actually get another first down without scoring if they got it into the five-inch line. I guess for all practical purposes, first and goal, but actually first and ten. Side the 11. Here's Gaddis. Carries a couple with him before the wall catches up to push it back. But he got inside the five to the four. Pick up of six or seven as Joe King and Mike Clark make the tackle. Take another look at the pitch. Leon Perry and Ted Long throwing blocks. The offensive line doing a job and Joe King and Rod Smith coming up there to make the hit on Mike Gaddis. Second and four now from the four Gaddis touchdown Oklahoma no he fumbled the ball but they say he scored first oh that's a huge play they give him the touchdown crossed the end zone before he fumbled the football and the Sooners make it 36 to 15 second play of the fourth quarter Mike Gaddis goes in from four yards out for the touchdown. And R.D. Lasher on to try the point after. Gaddis, third touchdown of the afternoon. Here's the point. Yep. 37-15 is our count. Oklahoma is taking command now as we move into the fourth quarter. Back with a kickoff to the Cowboys in just a minute. Oklahoma set to kick it off with Brad Riddell. Sooners leading the Cowboys, 37-15 and 14-22 remaining. Mayfield has to go, and the touchback will give it to the Cowboys, first to 10 from their own 20. Take another look at the touchdown run by Mike Gaddis. You see the strength of this young man as he just pulls his way into the end zone. Take a look at the scoring drive for the Oklahoma Sooners, 22 yards, four plays, took a minute 23, a four-yard touchdown run by Gaddis, his third touchdown of the day. Just a rare combination, Robbie, of speed and power that you don't see many that have both of that, and Gaddis certainly does. Just a sophomore. Ooh. The rest of the Big 8 hates that. <laughs> It'll be frightening for the opponent. First to 10 from the 20, and Gundy. In trouble, bumped into his own man, got a little more time, and just unloads. Mayfield nearest the football. Keith Roller was the offensive lineman who bumped into Mike, and then Tracy Gordon was all over the senior from Midwest City, Oklahoma. Pretty difficult to throw passes all the time on the run and pick out the right receiver and, and hook up and make the completion. But you've been able to see today that when Gundy has had some time, He's been able to find the receiver and hit the mark. Green and Kirksey, the wideouts, on second down and 10. The safety to Brown. He loses one man. 20. And hard out of bounds. And boy, that was a hard-earned couple of yards as Kevin Thompson makes the play and a flag is thrown. Just a pickup of one. Holding on the Cowboy. It'll take care of that. So that'll wipe that play out. Well, Dance by Wilson. And then shoved out of bounds. You know, Oklahoma State, and you have to do what, what the game dictates you do. Oklahoma State has had somebody rush for 100 yards in 22 consecutive games. That is certainly in jeopardy now as Brown does have 66 yards on 23 carries, but 
Oklahoma State's going to pretty much have to keep the ball in the air to get back in it here early in the fourth quarter. And here's where things could turn into a rout because Oklahoma can afford to gamble and do some things here. The Cowboys backed up deep in their own territory and Pat Jones realizing any chance for a victory here going to have to do some things that you wouldn't want to do maybe in this situation. Take some chance. And Gundy will do it on second and 20 from his own 10. Complete. Wilson out of the backfield. Near a first down as he is stopped at the 27, maybe 28-yard line. Belser and Ray making the tackle. And Wilson, Wilson hobbled just a bit as Cecil got up slowly. Uh, Wilson, Frank Levins is uh, assigned to cover Wilson coming out of the backfield, and Cecil just runs away from him here. He's wide open. Wilson makes the grab. Belson and Terry, uh, Belser and Terry Ray on the attack. Mike Capuzzi comes in for Cecil Wilson. Kirksey leading out of the huddle to check the play, and they'll send in Green with it. There's Wilson. Third and two at the 28, and now a timeout called, and if the Cowboys are to be in it later on, they will wish they had not used this one. Now Mike Gundy seems to be arguing, saying, wait a minute. I don't know. We'll take a break. We'll get it all cleared up when we come back. 37-15, our score sooner. The Cowboys have used their last timeout, and it's third and two. Dillard makes the tackle on Gundy, keeping the football, but a first down for Oklahoma State. They use their last timeout to make the play call there, and the Cowboys have it first and 10 at their own 30, trading 37-15 and 12-53 remaining in the football game. Mike Gundy is now hit on 13 of 30 passes for 161 yards. Pat Jones on the sideline. Gundy in the shotgun. Wilson and Brown, the backs to flank it. Run for your life again. And he is the freshman under throws to Mark Walker. What an afternoon. Dillard and Backer, both there. Look at this. Mike Gundy trying to find somebody, but lots of pressure. Throws the ball away, and down he goes. Second down. Gary Gibbs liking what he sees. It got a little antsy for the young head coach in the early moments of the third period the Cowboys got three straight field goals from Kerry Blanchard to go from a 23-6 halftime deficit to pull within eight but then Mike Gaddis the second play from scrimmage following that an 80-yard run Gundy again scrambling on second and ten and he is sacked Kevin Thompson gets him Gundy brought down on his own 19 and the Sooners, who came in with 18 sacks as a defensive unit, finally get to Mike Gundy. Well, Thompson came with a blitz from the corner. Then the protection broke down, and really no place for Gundy to go. Now it makes it third, and about 19. Thompson's first sack of the year. Kevin out of Houston, Texas, Westbury High School. 5'11", 193, he is a senior. Third and 21. The ball at the 19 for the Cowboys. Gundy, again, he is back at his own 10. Tracy Gordon, Tom Backus, and they're celebrating here in Norman. Simply no chance. Kerry Blanchard now has to do his job and Put this thing out of his own end zone. This is where we were in the second quarter when Oklahoma was able to move out to a 23-6 lead because of good field position. Low snap. Blanchard takes an Oklahoma State bounce and goes forward midfield. And he'll stop it at the 47 as Webb downs the football. 35-yard kick. And the Sooners will take over in Oklahoma State territory with 11.02 to go and a 22-point pass. A rough opening in the Big 8 Conference for Oklahoma State to meet their big rival, Oklahoma. The Sooners 
assuming they can hold on here. We'll move to 2-0 and in the league. Meet Texas next week. Pat Jones will take his crew back to Stillwater to go against Kansas State. Well, I'm sure he's thinking about that offensive line, Bill, and it just takes time, folks. Uh, this is the fifth game of the season, all brand new people, and I know Cowboy fans want them to uh, want them to improve in a hurry, but it just takes time to be able to learn how to do the right things, not only in the running game, but pass protection for a run-oriented line is uh, that's a difficult thing to learn, and it just well, takes a while. And when you're down 22 in the fourth period, and everybody in the building knows you're going to throw, uh, an NFL offensive line may not be able to keep the heat off, but you have no choice if you're going to try to have an opportunity to bail out the football game. So right. uh, just a real rough situation, and the learning experience that's right. is a brutal one sometimes. Yeah, that's exactly right. But every down that uh, you play, you get better, and uh, that's where the Cowboys find themselves with this offensive line. First and 10, Oklahoma at the 47 of the Cowboys. Pete Collins in command. The Gaddis. He gets to the 42, give him five. Bright and Brooks make the tackle. Collins getting his second start of the season. Steve Collins injured early in the year. Melson was ineffective in the Arizona game. Thus, a week off gave him a chance to make a move there. Tink Collins played well against Kansas and has done a good job here this afternoon. Gaddis. Finally, slow down. Bright makes the tackle. And a loss on the play. Stopped in his own territory and a flag also thrown. Mark at the 49. I should say his own territory. The Oklahoma State 46. I beg your pardon. against Oklahoma State. 10-22 remaining. 37-15 Oklahoma. And wanting more. You can bet that Gary Gibbs is going to give Tink Collins all the opportunities he can to play here simply to try to gain as much experience before a big game like Texas next week at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. Freshman out of Ponca City, 5'10", 178 pounder. Sends one man wide to the right. That is long. And Collins keeps the football, spins, made something out of nothing, and got the first down as he crosses to the 35-yard line. That spin did it. Green made the tackle. Tink Collins, a redshirt freshman out of Ponca City. Probably the best passer of the three who were vying for the quarterback spot in Chris Melson and uh, Steve Collins. Got good footwork. That's what Coach Gibbs likes about it. Fred Douglas Collins the third. He said, don't call me Fred. In fact, forget Doug, too. Take the two. On the end around. Headlong. Offended at the 24-yard line, but a first down. A pickup of 11 on the play. Joe King makes the stop. Long's had a couple big runs today. Yeah, the last time they ran that play, he picked up 34 yards. This time he picks up 11. But another first down for Oklahoma. Sooner shuttle some players in. Cooper checks back in, bringing the play with him. First and 10 at the 23 of Oklahoma State. Now, Eric Bross enters the lineup as you look at Mike Clark and the Cowboy defense. And the Sooners a little confused as to who's in the huddle, who's playing this one, and they call a timeout. Timeout on the field with 9.27 to go in the ballgame and 37-15 Sooners on top. Mike Jones, backfield coach, visiting with Collins. Collins, who's familiar with Oklahoma State backup quarterback Chris Smith, as both hail from Ponca City. Collins playing behind him, younger being the freshman. We may see some of Chris Smith today for Oklahoma State. 
I don't know if Pat Jones wants to keep throwing Mike Gundy to the Wolves if this thing indeed becomes impossible to win, and we're reaching that point, I think. Well, he's got the Big A Conference record, and I know that'll be a cherished moment for everybody uh, involved with the Oklahoma State football program, and you still have a, a long conference season to go. Kansas State in next week, and then uh, Nebraska the week after that. The Sooners have one timeout remaining, not that they should need it. The Cowboys are all out of timeouts, but we have 9.27 to go in this football game. And it's been a strange one, to say the least. 79-yard punt return by Mike Clark of the Cowboys, 80-yard run by Mike Gaddis, swings back and forth, but the Sooners have never trailed, and they're looking to pack on seven more. First and 10 at the 23. Mike Gaddis, fumble the ball. Cowboys have recovered. Rod Smith comes up with it. Gaddis has had two fumbles now this afternoon that he has lost, and that's been the only thing to mar a spectacular performance. Yeah, he uh, spins here, and the ball just comes loose. And the Cowboys are right there on it. So they, uh, they dodge a bullet there as Oklahoma was driving. Oklahoma State takes over at their own 15. Rod Smith recovers for Oklahoma State. And for Rod, his second recovery of the season. Mike Gundy, 9.20 to go. First and 10 of the 15. Draw play, Vernon Brown. No for much. Haven't seen anything of Gerald Hudson today. Had a bruised knee and was expected to be ready to go for this one, but did not practice much, if at all. And... Unable to go. Dressed out every day this week, uh, Bill, but just not able to uh, to move around. There you see Gerald Hudson, third leading rusher in the nation. Should be ready for Kansas State. Second down and eight at the 17. Gundy. Incomplete and a collision out of bounds. It'll rattle some heads. Mayfield, the receiver, but out of bounds to Quasi on his back. Curtis Mayfield bounced right up, took a pretty good shot there from Greg DeQuazy. Had to go up to get the ball. It's always tough for a receiver when you take a shot at or take a chance on getting hit while you're up in the air. But if you're a receiver, you have to be fearless when you try and go catch the football. Third down now for Oklahoma State. And eight to go for Mike Gundy and crew as Walker checks back into the Cowboy lineup. Mayfield to the bottom of your screen. Green to the top. Out of the shotgun against Gundy on third and eight from his own 17 and 8.36 to go. And he is sacked again. Boy, oh boy. Mayfield. Corey Mayfield, a freshman from Tyler, Texas, 6'3", 250. You know, and Billy, he's got uh, he's got Gerard Green open right about now, but as you can see, he doesn't have time to throw the football, so down he goes. Maybe a sophomore missed last year due to a pop 48 victim. Lancelot punt again out of his own end zone. Deja vu. Otis Wilson at midfield to return for Oklahoma. He's a dangerous return man who hasn't had much opportunity today. Fair catches. <laughs> Bobble had enough time to get a grip on it. We'll take a break with 7.49 to go, 37-15, Oklahoma. Second and three at the 44 for Oklahoma. Lewis picked up seven on first down, gets the call again, and gets the first down on second as Elmer Williams and George Bright made the tackle. I beg your pardon if you're still laughing at home. Otis Wilson did not receive that punt, but Otis Taylor. <laughs> Otis Wilson can do a lot of things, but I don't think punt receiving is one of them. He's also not a member of the Oklahoma football team, but in the National Football League. Right. <laughs> Gary Gibbs, they, I don't know if he can play for my defense the way this one's been going this year. First and 10 at the 39 of Oklahoma State. Collins, oh, just a hair behind Artie Guess. Guess was flying down the sideline. Mike Clark covering for the Cowboys. 
Well, I don't know if we have seen the last of, uh, of Mike Gattis uh, for today. Bill, 654 left in the ball game, but he, is, uh, he has turned in a rather impressive performance today. Rushing for 268 yards, which is the third best single game in OU history. And then some big time backs that have turned up some huge numbers here. Second and 10 of the 39. In motion is Smitherman. Here they come again with a reverse. This is Joey Vick, the big freshman tight end out of Oklahoma City Millwood High School. 6'7, 255 pounds. Casey Satterwhite of equal stature made the stop. Heck of a basketball player at Millwood High School. Out of the same mold as Keith Jackson, the great OU tight end who is now with the Philadelphia Eagles. Joey Mickey, a true freshman. Third and fourth of 33. 621 to go. 37-15 sooner. Lewis to the 30. Front wall making the tackle. A little short of the first down, it'll be fourth and one. Sooner crowd wanting more. Mike Lewis averaging of almost eight yards every time he carries the football, but hey, he's not going to get a lot of shots at it as long as Mike Gaddis is around. And he's an exciting back. Yeah. Coaches here love Lewis, but those that have wanted him to get more playing time will hush after Gattis' performance today. Perry, wow, was he rocked by David Brooks. Collins just lucky to hand the football off before Big 89. A freshman out of Tulsa, Washington, laid it on him. I'll tell you what, that's a credit to the Oklahoma State defense as there's timeout on the field with 5.34 to go. Oklahoma out in front of Oklahoma State 37-15. Come back to the action, and Mark Walker has just made a reception on a second and 10 from the 33 situation. Chris Smith, junior quarterback, getting his first work today, and he hooks up to Mark Walker, a sophomore from Guthrie, Oklahoma. And it makes it first and 10 at the 46, a pickup of 13 yards for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. They trail with 4.44 and the clock moving. It's 37.15 OU. A boosty and Fisher are the new running backs for the Cowboys. Play action. Smith. Incomplete. Intended for Gerard Green on the sideline of Oklahoma. Backus was all over Smith, and doesn't matter who the quarterback is, that Oklahoma front's going to put plenty of pressure on it. Yeah, and everybody wants to play, you know, and when you get out there to play, try and put forth your best effort. The name of the game here for Oklahoma is still to put heat on the quarterback. Chris Smith comes in. Mike Dundee completes his day, hitting 13 of 32 passes for 161 yards. Second and 10 from the 46 of the Cowboys for OSU. Smith, no receivers, and he dumps it out of bounds. There's a flag, it will be intentional grounding as there was no one within 15 yards of that pass. You see Bobby Proctor, the secondary coach there, lifted the headsets up for OU and said, come on now. Chris Smith is probably saying, well, no, wait a minute. He didn't throw that on Gundy. Yeah. You know, why me? <laughs> but it is, uh, that was perhaps a little more obvious than some of the others. No place to go and nobody to throw it to. Well, it looked like it was a broken play as there was supposed to be a handoff and the ball carrier didn't take it because there were no receivers out on the play. Well, that puts the ball back to the Oklahoma State 21-yard line now. Third down, 35 to go for the first. Oh boy, is that in the wrong direction? 419 remaining. Smith pitches to Fisher. Off the right side, picks up a couple. Ronnie Fisher is a 5'11 freshman from Port Arthur, Texas, Austin High School, 180 pounder. Gets his first carry. Dillard and DeQuazy making the tackle. Oklahoma has the second group in. Not much drop off though. 
Ronnie Fisher is a true freshman. So a couple of true freshmen getting some action today. George Bright, Ronnie Fisher. Thought Bright played real well. Mm -hmm. In on a lot of tackles. Pat Jones had originally hoped to redshirt his entire freshman class, but unable to do so. So on fourth and 33, Smith with a fake punt now. Blanchard, I mean, finally has to kick it off as there was pressure on him. And it'll roll out toward the 50. End up being around a 27-yard punt, but that kind of shows you what kind of afternoon it's been for the Oklahoma State Cowboys with Blanchard. I think Blanchard uh, might have thought about running that yeah. for a moment, but then in the face of adversity, decided that discretion would be the better part of valor and, and booted it away. You can see that there's no place to go, and so backwards we go, and we kick that thing away. For, I'll tell you what, it takes a pretty good athlete to do that, mm -hmm. Bill. That's not easy to do, to run around and kick that thing the opposite way. So after the bad snap, he didn't have much choice. Chris Melson comes in now for Tink Collins. Melson, a sophomore from 8, Oklahoma, 5'11", 185. Has rushed for 100 yards on 17 carries this year. And their time has stopped momentarily as it's 328 remaining. It's 37 and 15. Sooner. Chris Lowry and Cornell Cannon in there. Now for Oklahoma State. Chris Melson started the first game of the year, or uh, went into play after at the Arizona game after Steve Collins uh, broke his finger. Second and 11 from the 49 of OU. Loss of one on the play. This is Brewer. And he is brought down short of midfield. No game. Elmer Williams and Chris Lowry. Lowry out of Paradise, Texas. Brewer. Averaging 5.9 per carry. Heavy recruiting battle for Brewer. Out of luck. Third down and 10. Ball on the 50. McKinley back there. Nelson pitches to Brewer. Turns it up. And they've got the first down. Yep, they're going to mark it at the 39-yard line. And that'll be enough to move the chains. So Oklahoma will maintain possession of the football as... Cornell Cannon and Joe King were in on the stop for the Cowboys. Well, one of the reasons that George Bright was inserted in the starting lineup today was because of the speed of the Oklahoma backs. And that's a good example of it right there. You just have to be able to stretch out the wishbone offense and run it from boundary to boundary. First and 10 at the 39. Brewer, straight up field. Across the 30 and another first down. Mark it at the 28-yard line, a pickup of 11. And you know, Robbie, the offense with Collins, he may not be a great passer, but he plays with good, great poise for a freshman, throws the ball well enough, well enough, and if they'll just throw it 10 times a game, whether anybody catches it or not, defenses will have to respect them. And I think Collins can get the job done there for the quarterback and make this offense now that they can go eye, they can go wishbone. Uh, certainly much more versatile as Brewer gets the call again on a first and ten. Brought down by Woolridge and Jewel. Uh, one of the problems that you have as a defensive unit trying to practice and get ready for Oklahoma is if you don't have speed to practice against, then it's very difficult to simulate the offense. And uh, that, that's a problem that, uh, that everybody has. So it's not inherent with just Oklahoma State. Everybody has the same problem. Second down and five of the 23. 121 to go in this. Sooner victory, 37-15. They lead it right now. Oliver made the tackle on Melson that time. Roy McFarland also there. Now, what's, I always wonder in these type of situations, those coaches just don't take those headsets off for the last minute and say, here, gang, we'll sit back, at least enjoy one for a little bit. Brewer, no way. Jay Fleshman and Elmer Williams there for a loss on the play. Clock moving at 43 seconds. We'll probably have one more play in this ball game. It'll be fourth down and a dozen for the Sooners from the 30 of Oklahoma State. OU to go four and one. The Cowboys to be just the opposite, one and four. 
Well, a good thing, though, now, Bill, is that this game is out of the way. You move on, get ready for a team that you'll be favored against next week. Get ready to win a football game. On fourth and 12, Brewer, and he's racked pretty hard after a couple. As Oliver and Williams make the tackle at the 28-yard line, and that will be the final play of the game. Oklahoma wins the Bedlam battle and continues its string of victories over Oklahoma State. 37-15, our final. We'll be back.